The following broadcast of Houston Arrows Hockey is a UPN 20 Sports presentation. survival, but the K-Wings have not been the problem. This season comes down to three arch enemies. The Orlando Solivers, the Fort Wayne Comets, and the Cincinnati Cyclones. If it were not for these big guns, the Arrows may have been basking in glory. Instead, their playoff hopes have died down and pride is their only mission. Saturday night on Ice is next. It's Saturday night on ice. Tonight, the Houston Arrows take on the Michigan K-Wings in live International Hockey League action. A very pleasant good evening, everybody, and welcome to Wings Stadium. I'm Adam Gordon. The Arrows in the midst of three games in as many nights. They'll wrap it up tomorrow against the Fort Wayne Comets. Tonight's game, though, commences a five-game in nine-night road trip that'll take them to Fort Wayne tomorrow, then Orlando on Wednesday, Indianapolis on Friday, and then right back here to Kalamazoo to take on the K-Wings and wrap up the swing. And Mike Greenlay, a terrific game last night. They defeated the Cleveland Lumberjacks by a score of 6-2. to two. Up and down the roster, everybody played great, but there was one defenseman that really seemed to shine brightly above all the others, and that was Steve Jakes. Steve Jakes has been pretty solid all year long. He's in the plus column, which is a good accomplishment for the Arrows. And I tell you what, last night he had a goal and assist, and you see the stat, no fights. And that's kind of a little joke, because if he'd have had a fight, he'd have had what we call a Gordie Howe hat trick. Ah, but he did have a couple of elbows in there, so the kind of the Gordie Howe-like hat trick. One guy that had a couple of goals last night and continues to play well is Mark Lamb. Mark Lamb did play really well last night, and he has played well the last few games. The last two games, he has four goals, one assist, and he's just two assists to get his four hundredth in his pro career so look for him maybe to get those tonight here at wing stadium time for the Oshman's game plan it's brought to you by Oshman super sports usa last night the arrows were winning the little battles it paid off well then they have to win the little battles especially in this rink they have to dig the puck out of those corners feed them to the guys in front and let them jam them home secondly the arrows have to customize the rink that means it's a small rink they have to uh, customize themselves to it it's a small neutral zone and giveaways could be very costly here third stamina short shifts is a key word here here because you get out there too long and you only have three games in three nights. Well, you talk about the size of the ring. Goaltender Troy Gamble will start that. He says you have to read and react very quickly because things do happen in a very big hurry. When we return, Mike Greenlay chats with the head coach of the Arrows, Dave Tippett. This is Saturday Night on Ice. UPN 20 Saturday Night on Ice is sponsored by Southwest Airlines. Columbia Healthcare Partners, by Chrysler Plymouth, by Dodge, by Jeep Eagle, and by Whataburger. Welcome back to Wing Stadium. Mike Greenley along with head coach Dave Tippett. Last night, the Arrows defeating Cleveland Lumberjacks 6-2 at home. And Dave, how good does it feel to get back in that win column? Well, it was very good. It was a very strong effort by the guys. They came out and played very hard. Uh, won a lot of one-on-one -on -one battles that uh, we felt was a uh, concern from the Wednesday night game that we lost. And uh, they played very hard. And uh, it's great to see the fans and everybody excited at the game. It's, it's great, to, great to win. Uh, you talk about the fans. And, and the great thing about the Houston fans is win or lose, they have shown up and given great support. Yeah, the players appreciate that. I mean, after the game, everybody was in there talking about, you know, not just the, the enthusiasm of winning, but the, the feeling inside the building with the fans uh, screaming and yelling. And, uh, you know, they've supported us unbelievable all year. And uh, the players realize that, and, and they, uh, they appreciate it a great deal. Tonight starts a nine-day, five-game road trip for the Houston Arrows. Uh, what special things do you tell the guys in a situation like this? Well, it's a, it's a situation where we're uh, in for a tough week. And, uh, you know, we're a team that I think we're going to play very loose right now and uh, come out and just uh, play as hard as we can and let the chips fall where they may. You know, we're, we're a team that uh, the pressure's, you know, on the other teams as, as they uh, come down the stretch. We're going to go out and, like I say, just play hard, play loose, and, uh, and get as many wins as we can. All right, real quickly, how big is 
uh, physical play going to be in this small building tonight? Uh, it's a huge part of the game. We just uh, had our little team meeting, and uh, you know, a situation like this where you come in here, especially Michigan losing a game last night, it's going to come down to one-on-one -on -one battles, and uh, and the team that battles the hardest and wins the most one-on-one -on -one battles is going to come out the winner, I think. All right, good luck tonight. Thanks very much, Green. Okay, Dave Tippett, head coach of the Houston Arrows, and we'll be back to Wing Stadium right after this. Welcome to Wing Stadium. Adam Gordon along with Mike Greenlay. We get set for the Arrows and the Michigan K-Wings. The K-Wings lost last night by a score of 5-6-1 to, six to one over the Indianapolis Ice. In goal for Houston after the 6-2 win last night against Cleveland, it'll be Troy Gamble. A record of 13-22-4 and a 3.87 goals against average. He picked up the win last night, making his fourth straight start. And the Michigan K-Wings are led in goal by a great youngster who shut out the arrows earlier this year, Jordan Willis. He'll get the nod. Willis was a 10th round draft pick, 243rd overall in the 1983 entry draft. And overall this year, good rookie numbers, 15, 8, and 8, and a 3.30 goals against average. As we're getting set for Houston and the Michigan K-Wings, three games in three nights. And... The season's starting to wind down. The Arrows having just two home games going down the stretch. Dave Tippett on the bench for the Houston Arrows. And the Arrows record at 25, 42, and 7. The Arrows coach Dave Tippett, though, picking up just win number 13 in his brief coaching career. He's now 13, 15, and 4. On the other side of things, Claude Noel, who coaches the K-Wings, uh, he replaces Ken Hitchcock, who midseason was taken up by the Dallas Stars, the parent club of this K-Wing Hockey Club. And so Claude Noel has taken over and done a tremendous job with this club. And the guy next to him, assistant coach Brian Tulick, have done a really good job with this club. So it's Michigan K-Wings with Neil Brady, Derek Smith, and up front also with them will be Chris Jensen. Mark Lamb, Al Conroy, and Kelly Hurd to start things off for Houston. Puck is out at center, and the arrows shoot the puck in. Bradbury goes back to play for Michigan in his own end. He's tapped into the wall by Conroy, then fell on it, and whistle will halt play with 15 seconds into the contest. Something that the arrows did very well last night was four check. That's going to be very important in a rink like this. We talked about uh, hemming a team in and then winning those little battles. Well, one of the big things about hemming someone in and winning those little battles is a good check and get a ring like this you can really really keep the pressure on them down deep in their zone and they're gonna have to do that to beat this Michigan club face off in the circle to the right side of Jordan Willis it'll be lamb against Neil Brady once again Brady missed 19 games with a broken jaw and that's why the protective face shield out at center ice it's Brad Berry steers it into the arrow end Apple comes out of the net and he'll leave it for hurl but in a way the arrows will come Pearl, but charges up and out of his zone and through the neutral zone, a pass went into the Michigan end and Colin Bauer goes back. Bauer for check by Lab, and it's turned around by the K-Wings. Neil Brady skating out at center, dumped the puck into the Houston zone. It'll go down to Troy Gamble. He'll slow for the first man back. That's Hurl, but roll it along the boards. This will go the length of the ice and icing will be called as Michigan goes back to touch. That is Darren Smith touching and the faceoff will come back into the Houston zone. We're just about a minute into the contest. No score. You know, Adam, I, I think maybe some of the stats are on the Arrows' side tonight as uh, the visiting team has won five of the six meetings this year with the exception of the Houston 6-5 shootout win on November 4th at the Summit. So the Arrows 
have had success against the Michigan K Wings and have won the last two times in here and have done well have come from behind twice this year to beat this team but I don't think they want to come from behind tonight I think they want to lead from the uh, outset arrows win the draw and it's Jake's bangs one along the boards not out held in by Michigan second effort Jim Storm fired it back into the arrow in Jake's in behind the net and he'll start the rush from behind the cage oh lost it near Shane Peacock rolled it in foot the pass came right through the crease and right by Troy Gamble and the arrows are able to move it out at center Terjall through the neutral zone across the line with Freer. quick shot and a stick save made by Jordan Willis Terjean gives it back to Freer, spins it down to Maurice, banks of the right circle. Maurice with the puck right side, centered one, nobody home for Houston, and Shane Peacock will gobble up the puck and move it out to center ice for Jim Storm. Puck into Arrow territory, and Jakes is back. Jakes out at center for Maurice. And it'll be Terjean that fired it into the Michigan end, and Darren Smith goes back to play. Smith up and out of his zone as he meandered out at center. Fired it into Houston territory. Hustling out of the net was Campbell. Swings one near side. Slavchenko trying to clear it. Slavchenko moves it out at center ice. He'll shoot the puck into the Michigan end. Out of that, Jordan Willis fired it into the side of his net. I lost sight of it just a moment. I thought maybe he almost tucked it into his own net, but there's like a little edge, a little border around the uh, outside of the net, and it kind of got lodged in there. For a second there, almost a little excitement as a Goldener put his uh, put his skate up against the post and actually as soon as he did it I was like well his skates right up against the post and I don't see a puck there but like you said it got lodged in the in the net in the net on the side there and they just blow the whistle face off will come to the left side of netminder Jordan Willis off the face off it's controlled by Michigan and shot out at center for Travis Richards trying to move it through O'Brien who's in tonight for Gord Donnelly who picked up a game misconduct last night and has to sit out a mandatory game. Slip tank of the right side and across the line to the basket top. Basket top trying to cut in. Jordan Willis poked it away. Picked up by the K-Wings and they'll move it around as it's Kevin Meehan. They'll move it up along the boards. It came to Travis Richards and the K-Wings skate out with it. Darren Smith creamed it into the arrow end. Comes squarely out in front. Sean O'Brien got back to play it. He's got Meehan on his case. Battle for the puck and basket top is there. Rolled it over to Yo. He trying to move it out of there, and Bashkatov was hauled down, trying to draw a penalty, won't get it. Yo out at center, dump the puck into the arrows, make a line change. Brad Barry to the right side, and it's brought in across the line by Chris Jensen. Jensen to Colin Bauer, scooped it down low, Neil Brady trying to center one, it came to Bauer behind the net, who's pinching from the point, he's got Jensen back, covering for him. Here's Jensen, right side, shoots and smacked it wide, it went off, Derek Smith. Arrows can't clear it. Here's Michigan again. Coming in with a backhander. That's kicked away. Colin Bauer right side getting set. Worked it down to Derek Smith. Base in the right circle for Neil Brady. Trying to shake off a hurl butt check. Brady cuts in. Wrap around. Gamble stopped it. Fucking hunt. Jensen trying to get a shot away. He had Krumpke draped all over him. And finally Gamble came over to play it away. And it's out at center ice for Kelly Hurd. Three and a half got by in the first. In a scoreless hockey game. The arrows off sides. We take timeout. Scoreless from Michigan. And we'll be right back. Flying to Las Vegas for business? If these 13 reasons don't convince you to fly Southwest Airlines to Las Vegas, maybe this will. Fly Southwest, the low fare airline. When you change everything and break the rules, you can expect a reaction. We sure got one. Four Dodge nameplates were just named Consumer's Digest Best Buys. So we're celebrating with savings on this Best Buy. Dodge Neon. With more standard horsepower than Cavalier, Escort, and Civic, Neon also has a lower starting price. Even before $1,000 cash back or 1.9% financing. See the friendly Dodge dealer near you. Back in Michigan, Igor Bashkatov, Vadim Slavchenko, Mike Yeo to take the face off. Off the draw. K Wings have got it. It's Brian Curran. He'll roll one ahead, and it's turned away by Robert Petrovichki. It's out at center, Jim Storm, and it went into the arrow end, and Carl Valamont hustles back to play. 
Valamont trying to clear the zone. It's jumped on by Petrovicki, trying to jam one down. It's picked up by Jakes, and it's shot the length of the ice. They say no icing, as they felt Brian Curran could have played it. Here come the Kane Wings. Petrovicki trying to move it out of the zone, wrapped it ahead, and here comes Shane Peacock leading the rush. Give it to Jim Storm across the line. Storm cuts it back. Petrovicki cutting left wing, looks in front. Jake stayed with him, stride for stride. Petrovicki circled back along the left side, looks in front as he trying to cut away from Slavchenko, cannot, and Jakes will roll it away right up to Mike Yo. Yo takes a bump from Peacock, but got it out at center, but Sergei Gusev is there. Four and a half gone in the first, scoreless. From Kalamazoo, Michigan, the Arrows and the Michigan K-Wings. Jakes, right side pass from Maurice, intercepted. But the Arrows get it back. Carl Valamont fired it into the Michigan zone, and Jordan Willis comes out to play it. Behind the net, they set up. Michigan breaks it out. Aaron Smith pass out to center. It is Kevin Meehan, rolled it into the arrow end. O'Connor tried to thwart it, and play is whistled down. And let's go down to Rob Dobson. Dobber, lot made about this rink, this small rink. Is it really a factor, the size of this rink? Sounds like Dobber uh, not ready for us. And uh, uh, your thoughts on the smaller rink? Well, I tell you what, I think it's a benefit to goaltenders especially because there's not as many wide angles as, uh, as, a, as a larger rink. So a goaltender can just pretty much stand uh, at this post and cover more angles than he would in a bigger rink. Clock is controlled by Miles O'Connor off the draw, and the arrows scoop it out at center. And here comes Maurice, in across the line. Dropped it, O'Brien, quick shot, snap wide, rebound. Came out in front, and it's jumped on by Kevin Meehan. Played a few games with Peoria last year, and uh, finished most of the year with the Fort Wayne Comets. Now out at center, it is Sylvain Turgeon. Takes a bump along the boards, but Meehan turns it around. Meehan, the pass ahead for uh, Zach Boyer, and he ripped that one right off the post. You might have heard that one. Mike Maurice trying to move on ahead, but Derek Smith turned it around. Pass up for Neil Brady and across the line. Shoots, went wide of that. Picked up the rebound in front, but the arrows couldn't get there. Here's a penalty coming up. It's a wraparound. Stopped by Gamble. Rebound. Stopped by Gamble. As in there was Jeff Mitchell with a couple of chances, but we're going to get our first look at the Michigan power play as a penalty coming up, and Al Kimmel, our referee, is signaling a penalty, and we'll wait to see who it's on. I think it's uh, interference, and it looks like it's... Uh, originally, I was going to say against the, the arrows because uh, a stick was broken in the slot there, and that might have been the cause of it, but O'Brien will go to the penalty box for interference, so the Michigan K-Wings will get a first crack on the power play. So far this year, they're 11th in the league with 17.7%. The arrows' penalty kill is 18th in the league at 75%, So, but we did see them very effective last night against Cleveland on the penalty kill, so uh, good job uh, last night. Hopefully they can do that again tonight. A little uh, earlier on, just before that happened, though, a shot off the post uh, from quite a ways out, and I think maybe a bit of a screen or even a deflection on this one as uh, it caught the edge of the post and it went wide. For a minute there, when I heard that sound, I thought I'd come up with an idea. <laughs> yeah, but uh, you know what? I, I think the one thing you have to realize is that it's a short porch here, too, in, uh, in, uh, in Kalamazoo. Off the draw, it's controlled by Chris Jensen. Wings on the power play. Petrovicki rolled it down to Chris Jensen. Sets up left side. Getting set. Center one. It went through the crease. Peacock trying to move in there. Peacock normally a defenseman, but he's played the wing before. He played it in his career at Lethbridge in the juniors. As Goose have a shot stopped by Gamble. Picked up again by the K-Wings. Looped it down. Jensen rolled it to Petrovicki along the boards. Robert Petrovicki sets up at the hash marks left side. 125 on the power play. Cuts one out. Center. Gamble stopped it. Loose in front. Bang away. Here's the stuff shot. Gamble stopped that. Oh, Troy Gamble with a couple of terrific saves in front. And the puck is cleared. Sergei Gusev rolled it ahead to Jensen. And here come the K-Wings. Jensen fired it into the arrow end. Yo hustles back. Chipped it to the line. Not out. Held in by Gusev. It rolled down into the corner with a minute remaining in the power play. Battle for the puck. K-Wings have a right side. Robert Petrovicki setting up on the man advantage. Petrovicki, right circle, still with it. Still looks for the man to pass to. It comes back to the point. Colin Bauer, give it to Petrovicki. His pass came down. Gusev pinching. Looks for the man to pass to with seven minutes gone by in the first scoreless game. Here's a pass back to the line. Jensen. Rolled it to Petrovitsky. Cross ice pass over the stick of one of the K-Wings who was pinching back door, and that was Colin Bauer. And the arrows take it away and move to center. Short-handed Mark Freer. In across the line for Yo. He lost an edge, went down. Freer trying to gather it in along the boards. And 
the K Wing skate out with a Colin Bauer to Kevin Meehan. And across the line, Meehan pulled up right side with 15 to go on the power play. Shoots, and he cranked that wide of the net. And the puck will come back to center with 10 seconds to go on the power play. K Wing shoot it into the arrow end. Houston batting away at it. And finally, that'll go down the ice with two seconds left in the power play. And out of the box comes Sean O'Brien. Here come the K-Wings out at center, but it's taken away by Kelly Hurd. Bring it across the line with Baskatov. That's knocked away. Arrow's fighting for it, but it's picked up by Kevin Meehan. Nice job of stick handling through traffic and got it out at center ice for Travis Richards. Hits the line. That is offsides and play whistled down. Let's take time out. Scoreless from Kalamazoo. This is Saturday Night on Ice. That sound you hear is your good friend, Opportunity. And it's here to tell you that right now you can get a very enticing deal on a luxurious Lexus LS400 with the Lexus Custom Tailored Lease. But hurry, because the only thing more annoying than an insistent friend is having no friend at all. Answer the knock today at Westside Lexus and Sterling McCall Lexus. Monday on UPN, this is the Kess you know. This is the Kess you don't. Your mental abilities are rapidly maturing. Kess is possessed by a power she can't control. She wants to destroy the ship! It's a mind-blowing Star Trek Voyager, then on Nowhere Man. Unity! Commitment! The conspiracy that's out to destroy Thomas Vale is breeding a new generation of killers, and he's their next target. Nowhere Man. Right after Star Trek Voyager, UPN Monday. Sunday at 5, join Burt Reynolds, Dom DeLuise, and a cast full of superstars for a madcap cross-country race in Cannonball Run. The starting gun sounds tomorrow at 5 on UPN 20. 12.06 to go in the first, no score. Arrows win the draw, and here's Slivchenko. Gives it over to Terjean, snapped the pass through Baskatov. It went down the ice and into the Michigan end, and Travis Richards goes back. Richards forechecked by Slivchenko. Richards moves it along the boards. And it's turned away by Michigan, and in their own end, they'll move it up ice. Neil Brady, pass came out at center, and Jakes is there. Jakes just missed Slivchenko, and Richards goes back. Slivchenko had a goal and an assist last night. Had a very strong hockey game from both ends of the rink. As the puck goes down, Jakes is there to play it, and he's taken to the wall by Patrick Cote. Those two know each other pretty well, and then Cote gives Jakes a shot, and then gives Jakes another shot, and there's nothing coming out of it. Jakes talking with Cote, who wants to fight him. Here's a puck out at center for Neil Brady. Trying to turn it away. Cote trying to stir things up. That's what he does best. Is it Slivchenko right side? Cuts in, goes backhander over Willis. The puck was blocked, and then Turgeon ran into Jordan Willis. Knocked him down, and then Willis drills Slivchenko, and Al Kimmel's going to let him play, and then Turgeon comes in there, and Willis wants to fight him. Here we go. Cote's in there with Sean O'Brien. You've got Brad Berry tied up with one of the arrows. I think that's Jake's by process of elimination. Well, Willis gives Slivchenko a shot, and Turgeon comes in to go after Willis, but... Unfortunately, when anybody goes after a goaltender, you have to contend with five other players auto automatically. And that's what happened in this situation. Cote in there, but uh, I'll tell you what, Slavchenko gets knocked into the net and there was not going to be a call. So I'm surprised that Willis doesn't get an original penalty on that because of uh, Slipchenko getting shoved back into the net as he was trying to get out and eventually Barry and Turgeon go at it. Yeah, I said it was Jake's, it was Turgeon, and Turgeon will go to the box. And I'm telling you, I'm, I'm kind of curious if this were the third period, if Troy Gamble would have maybe <laughs> voiced his opinion. Well, it was a good a good opportunity off the start, and Slipchenko really had no choice but to keep going as he just just skating into the net and I don't know why he's being shoved around and oh it's Turgeon that actually runs into Willis but Willis takes it out on the guy who really couldn't do anything about the situation and that is Slivchenko I think he might have just been mad at the whole situation and I don't know if he's going to get a call for that but I'm sure he'll get something and then Turgeon comes back in there and I tell you what when you come after a goaltender like I said you're going to have to contend with more than just the goaltender you're going to have to get in there with a few of the other players as Barry comes in to protect him. A bevy of black around Turgeon there. 
Jakes had just left the ice. That's why I thought it was him, because I saw Cote still out there, and I thought perhaps Jakes might be uh, sniffing around for Patrick Cote, but no. Right now, Willis is getting the extra minor. It's the only one up on the board, as he'll get two minutes, probably for roughing. And so it, right now, as it appears, the arrows could be on the power play. So we'll see. The Kalamazoo Wings weren't able to score on their power play. The Arrows did a good job of killing that penalty, but now the Arrows will have an opportunity to turn it around right now. So we'll get there first. Look at the power play. Shots unofficially 5-1 in favor of the Michigan K-Wings. Conroy is out there with Mike Maurice, Kelly Hurd, Mike Hurlbutt, and Mark Lamb. Neil Brady will take the face off against Al Conroy. 11.04 to go in the first, no score. And now Mark Lamb talking to Al Kimmel. So, they're trying to sort things out. I don't know what the, the problem is right now. Colin Bauer comes over to talk to Al Kimmel. And Al Kimmel's just saying, hey, let's get this going. I, I'm done talking. We've called the calls. Let's start playing some hockey. And Hopefully he doesn't call any more delay of game penalties. I have a feeling this thing could maybe turn physical, maybe uh, really ugly because uh, Al Kimmel's going to let him play. Well, this is a physical rink just because of the size. There's not a lot of room for the guys to move around in, and therefore you're going to be running into more bodies uh, just just out of out of no more room to skate, and uh, and it causes more physical games. And I think what I think I think just Turgeon, I don't know what he's I don't know what's going on here. I thought he got five for fighting, but. All of a sudden, he's in the box. Well, I think Steve Sumner's got to fix a skate. Okay, well, I, 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 they were, I, they're probably trying to decide whether to bring Sumner across the rink to the penalty box or bring Turgeon back to the player's box. There's something's wrong, or maybe something with his jersey. He's taking his jersey off, but Steve Sumner's going to fix whatever's the problem. The puck is ripped along the boards. Arrows have it. Can they hold it in? Yes, it's Kelly Hurd. Slipped it in behind the Michigan net, and there was Travis Richards. He'll push it along the boards. It's held in by Houston. Mark Lamb left side. Quickly fired it down along the boards. Conroy trying to gather it in. It came to Maurice behind the cage. Maurice snapped it for Hurd and rolls it for Al Conroy. One and a half to go in the power play. Arrows control it nicely. Conroy, though, couldn't get it back to the line. It was intercepted by Neil Brady, and it shot right back down the ice. Gamble slows in behind the net, and the Arrows will turn it around. We're scoreless with ten and a half to go in the first period. It's Al Conroy at center. Conroy, give it over to Hurl Blatt, and here come the arrows through the neutral zone. The puck is dumped in, but the K-Wings get it back, and they will move it up ice. At along the near side, Brian Curran, he cleared it down the ice and into the arrow end, and Mark Lamb is back. Lamb turns behind the net, and he'll start the rush from left to right. Vadim Slipchenko who had a five-point night here last year in the only appearance the Arrows made last season here. The shot came on. Willis stopped it. Rebound was picked up by Yo, but he couldn't corral it. It went behind the net. Yo fights for it with 45 to go on the power play. Give it to Slivchenko. Back to the line. It's Lamb. To Slivchenko. Cuts in. Shoots, and he ripped the bullet high and wide of the net. Rear. Back to Slivchenko with 35 on the power play. To Lamb. Quick shot. Right on. Willis stopped it. Loose in the slot. And then Derek Smith, if that's not putting a glove on the puck, I don't know what is. That should be a two-minute penalty. For putting a, for closing the puck in your fist, that is illegal. That should be a two-minute minor, but Al Kimmel says play on. Freer. On it into the Michigan zone. Yo, he's tapped to the wall by Travis Richards, and the K-Wings shoot it down the ice with eight seconds to go in the power play, and out of the box will come one of the K-Wings, probably Cote, who's serving the minor. Puck down now on the near wall. It's turned away, and out of the box is Cote. And teams are five aside. Nine minutes to go. In the first, no score. Colin Bauer passed out at center for Peacock. And now Jim Storm got behind O'Brien. He's right in. But he tried to go to the backhand and lost the puck. O'Brien got back and harassed him enough. Puck is picked up by Houston. Kevin Malgunis in his first game back in quite a while. Curran snapped it out at center for Peacock. Trying to roll it in, it's offsides, and there's a timeout on the ice. 8.34 to go in the first, no score. This is Saturday Night on Ice. Whataburger wants to know, what's your number? I'm a four. I'm a two guy. Number one, or if I was real hungry, probably the number two. 
We have eight great water meals. Each one comes complete with fries and a drink. And now we're offering a special water meal featuring our crispy water catch fish sandwich. I'm a three. I'm a four. And they're all at great low prices. I'm a number two. So when it comes to good food at a great price, Whataburger's got your number. Uh, number one. Number one. He's a five and I'm a ten. What you waiting for? By the looks of it, it could be a whole new car company. It's one of the most successful car companies anywhere. It has the most innovative minivans in the world, the friendliest cars on the planet, and some of the most fun that ever prowled the streets. Plymouth. It's not just a new line of cars, but a whole new line of thinking. From Plymouth Place, our mobile information centers and showroom, to an internet showroom in your own home. Plymouth is one clever idea after another. After another, after another. Diamond Cutters International and the Houston Arrows are proud to present the Million Dollar Puck. That's right, a hockey puck made out of platinum and completely covered with 171 carats of pure white diamonds and four carats of emeralds. You could win it at Arrow Home Games this season. One fan will be chosen to take a shot on goal to win the Million Dollar Puck. you got to see it to believe it, and you can. It's on display at the Summit at all home games. That's the Million Dollar Puck brought to you by Diamond Cutters International, the official jeweler of the Houston Arrows. Out at center ice, the K-Wing shoot the puck into the Houston end. Gamble slowed behind the net, and Jakes will turn it around. Steve Jakes circled back behind the net, forechecked by Derek Smith. He'll move it up ice, though. Jakes chipped it off the glass, and it's back to Brian Curran. Just rolled ahead, and the arrow's trying to turn the puck around. Here's a chance for Neil Brady across the line. Couldn't do anything with it. The arrows trying to move it out. Chris Jensen worked it into the zone, though, for Derek Smith trying to center it. Ballamont was on his case. And the puck chipped away. Steve Jake rolled in behind the net for Al Conroy. Conroy moved it to the line, not out. Curran the drive. That's deflected away. And back out at center ice as Conroy got in front of Brian Curran. And talk about experience. Brian Curran, 381 NHL games. With what, seven different teams? Here's Mark Lamb the other way with a shot, and that thing's going to go high in the air, and they're going to lose that in the clouds. Saturday night on ice continues a week from tonight. In fact, you know what? I am just going to leave my clothes here. It's going to be the Arrows and the Michigan K-Wings right here. Same building, same time. And we invite you to be with us on your home for Houston Arrows Hockey, UPN 20, and the radio partner, Super Talk Radio 950 KPRC. Right now, Adam, it's a pretty good defensive game. The unofficial shots 5-2 for the Wings, and the Arrows did a good job last night of playing a good defensive game, and I think that's why they were able to come back in that third period and score five goals to win. Five unanswered goals, which tied a team record this season. Here's Levchenko centering one. Richard smoked it down the ice. They will say no icing. Now out of the net gamble, but Krupke hustles back to play. Krupke rolled one along the board. Big collision behind the net as Cote came in there to battle with Krupke. Now the puck behind the cage. In there is Sack Boyer. Boyer rolled one down in behind the net. Cote being held by Mike Hurdle, but trying to draw the penalty. Won't get it. And then Boyer takes uh, Bashkatov to the boards, and the K-Wings circle at center. Dumped it into Arrow territory. After it hurled, but he'll hustle behind his net and reverse it over to Krupke. It comes to Slivchenko, and here come the Arrows. Igor Bashkatov trying to move around Colin Bauer. Can't do it. And Sergei Gusev goes back to play it. 6.43 to go in the first. Still no score. K-Wings fling one out at center. And it'll go back into the Houston end. O'Connor trying to chip it out of there. Puck bouncing around. Petrovitsky's there. Centered one in front. That was tipped away by Miles O'Connor. He read that nicely. 6.30 to go. Puck comes into the slot. It's turned away now by Jim Storm. Storm for the K-Wings. Trying to loop it down. In behind the net. They fight for it. But it is Mike Maurice. Steers one up the boards from Algunas. And we've got a fight. It's going to be between Sean O'Brien and Jeff Mitchell. Mitchell and O'Brien drop the gloves. O'Brien a couple of rights. O'Brien another right. O'Brien another right. Holy cow! Right wing, if you will. Letting him go, and then he takes him down. I'm going to tell you one thing about the kid from Princeton University. You look at him, and he looks like the boy next door, but I'll tell you what, the kid is built. He is strong, and he showed it there. He's definitely solidly built, and it, you know, I, when, I, when I first looked at him, I saw his hands. He's got, he's got hands, big hands, like, like when you look at a puppy, and you know he's going to be a big, strong puppy dog because of his big paws. Well, he's got big paws, and he uses them in that fight pretty good. And yeah, you're right. He's a solid kid because he fights with Mitchell. And, and, and you're right. You're right earlier. You said that this could get a little... Uh, a little, uh, you know, rougher as the game went on, and and it looks like that's the way it's going to be. Michigan, you know, still trying to stick up there in the in their division. 
Well, here's how it all started behind the net as O'Brien had been looking to go earlier. Well, he, he just basically pins up against the boards and kind of goaded Mitchell into dropping the gloves. Finally, they take a look at each other and away they go. And so no one will get instigation here, but they both will get the five minute major for fighting. Sean O'Brien, as we said, went to Princeton University. Is not going to get those rights free. He gets one right, right there, and then all of a sudden just starts wailing away at Mitchell. But O'Brien went to Princeton University, and obviously the kid's probably smarter than you and I put together. But in going to Princeton University, obviously you accrue a lot of uh, school loans. And I asked him what he plans to do after hockey. He says, become a banker. <laughs> He's an econ major, was an econ major. But uh, he thinks banking is where it's going to be at to make the money in a hurry. Why not? You're surrounded by all those millions. Buck will be faced off again at center as there's no loss of manpower on the matching majors to Jeff Mitchell and Sean O'Brien. 6-17 to go in the first, no score. Off the faceoff. The K-Wings have it. Colin Bauer, the cross ice pass for Gusev. He'll turn it in across the line. Gusev harassed by Kelly Hurd. Balamont reaching for it. Scoop behind Petrovitsky, centered one, but the arrow's working away. And Conroy can't clear the zone. He was bumped by Bauer. Pass came back to Peacock, centered. Oh, and Campbell challenged Jim Storm right away, and the puck went through him, and it's right back down the ice. Gusev goes back on the four check of Lamb. Rolled it ahead for Shane Peacock. Peacock's pass knocked away by Hurd, and the K-Wings regroup in their own end. Long lead pass out at center. Jake's knocked it into the Michigan zone, and Sergey Gusev turns it around. Gusev scampers right side at center. In across the line, ran into one of the arrows. It was Kelly Hurd knocked him down, but the puck was turned away, and the arrow shoot at the length of the ice. In there was Bashkatov. He tried to control, but it's picked up by Neil Brady, and he'll move out at center ice. Brady in across the line, shot the puck in, Gamble slowed it. It's rolled back to the line, and Brian Curran is there. Worked it behind the net. It'll go to the far side. Chris Jensen getting set, scooped it down for Derek Smith, the team captain for this Michigan team. Puck came down to Mike Hurlbutt, rolled it over to Yo, and it's right back out at center ice. Under five minutes to go on this one, and the Earls, no score. For the K-Wings, puck in the Michigan zone, Krupke right side, centered one. Here's a shot, but Bashkatov fanned on it. Neil Brady overskates the loose puck, and that's jammed away by the Michigan K-Wings. Krupke with a long shot that goes wide of the net. After it, it's Mike Maurice. Turned it right side, Bashkatov trying to look for Slivchenko. Circles base of that circle. Slivchenko trying to cut in behind the net. Looks for a man to pass to. Good job of stick handling, and I don't know what he tried to accomplish there, but he snapped it back to the line, and it came out at center. Center ice, the K-Wings gathered in, and it's Brian Curran back into his own end. Pass came out at center. Maurice knocked it back into the Michigan end. Brian Curran goes back, scooped it off the board. It's out at center ice. It's Jinks with 4.10 to go. Got it into the Michigan end. That's rolled away, and here come the K-Wings out at center. Jake's trying to knock that away. Kevin Meehan through the neutral zone. It's the line. Meehan in across the arrow line. It's turned away, and here comes Miles O'Connor. Didn't like the way things were lining up for the breakout, so he circled back into his own end, and now Jake's out to center for Cote. He kicked it away. Now Gunas was in on the play. Missed 19 games partially due to injury, and now he's shaking up again. Looks like he might have got a high stick there. Well, we'll sort it out when we return. Time out on the ice. We're scoreless. The Saturday night on ice. When you need an auto part, you don't need to search high and low. It would start, run a little, then stop. I've seen this a thousand times in these Chevy pickups. But I said, go to high low and get a fuel pump. We figured about 50 bucks to fix it. I told him to try this $2 fuel filter first. It worked. I was a hero that day. He could get an auto part anywhere. What he needed was high low. Don't miss the wild, wild rate. Now playing at a Texas Jeep and Eagle dealer near you. Starring Grand Cherokee Laredo. Voted best full-size sport utility by the Texas Auto Writers Association. Directed by Chrysler Financial. An incredibly wild rate of just $2.98 a month. But if you want to get Grand Cherokee for $2.98 a month, you'd better get a move on. Because come March 31st, see your Texas Jeep and Eagle dealer today. Scoreless for Michigan, 3.43 to go, and there's probably one of the happiest arrows right now, Miles O'Connor, his alma mater. 
University of Michigan uh, won the hockey final for the team he played for defeating Colorado College in overtime it was a great goal too. went into overtime and they won it by a score of three to two so Miles O'Connor one of the happiest guys puck is shot into the Michigan end Jordan Willis rolled the puck away along the boards battle for it along the far side and finally whistle stops play with three and a half to go in the first no score pretty uneventful first period so far it's almost like both teams are are just waiting for the other to break something open here the shots on goal really haven't changed that much in the last five to ten minutes unofficially the wings still out shooting the arrows five to two and not a, not a lot of chances a lot of a lot of play in the end zone and a lot of uh, mid zone play but to tell you what not a lot of good scoring chances right away yeah, if I'm Dave Tippett I'd pull gamble right now what the heck he hasn't faced any shot attack yeah let's there. do it now <laughs> Michigan zone. Here is Mark Lamb circling the right side, getting set, chipped it back to the line. Jake's trying to hold it in, but it was almost intercepted by Cote. And finally, the Michigan K Wings get it back, but overskated by Zach Boyer at center ice. K Wings trying to move it ahead, and here come the arrows. Right side, Jake's. He takes a bump from Cote, and again, they get, continue to get tied up, and we'll keep an eye on those two down the other end. A shot stopped by Gamble. Pocket right here's the shot. That might have hit the post. Thing just went to the wide side of him and hit the post and the arrows have enough of that they'll shoot that the length of the ice as Brian Curran goes back and that will be an icing call well why does it always seem like I speak too soon Adam as soon as I said it was slowing down uh, a good break for Michigan and Gamble again coming up big on the saves he has been coming up big as of late makes a great pad save as a uh, great pass fed right in there and Peacock can't jam away to it and then off the rebound forces the Cal Kez Kezu Wings to shoot that one off the post. You know, and I like to say that because a lot of goaltenders say, yeah, well, I, I, I had the angle so good that I, I made him miss the net as he hit the post. But good job by Gamble. He's been challenging great lately and he does so there making a good save and then challenging on the second shot to force him to hit the post. Puck is rolled down into the arrow end. Krupke turning in the near side, trying to bank one out of the zone. It's intercepted by Michigan. Back to the line. Here's the shot by Smith. Ricocheted wide of the net. Petrovitsky lets it come back. I don't know what he was doing there. He overskated the puck, and now it came down. Petrovitsky cuts in, makes the move, lost the puck. Shot was fanned on, and the arrow's trying to get it out of there. Yo fighting for it. Still can't get it, but a second effort is out at center. Krupke regroups back in his own end. Arrows turning it around. Krupke right side trying to beat Slavchenko, but it came to Jim Storm. And across the arrow blue line with two minutes to go in the first. Petrovitsky trying to center one, but Krupke knocked it away. But Petrovitsky got it back. Robert Petrovitsky lost it. The arrows come out at center. Here's Conroy. Pass. Right side Slavchenko. I assume I said Conroy. That's Baskatov. Right side Slavchenko. Cutting in now. Centered one, but it was dropped for Sergei Gusev. And the K-Wings turn it around. Out at center ice, Sergey Gusev fired it into the Houston zone. O'Connor hustles back. Neil Brady got there. He centered one, but Jakes takes it away, and he'll fire one to Maurice. He missed the mark, and the puck will go down the ice. 133 to go in the first, and here's a turnover. Arrows get it. It is Turgeon. Right side, cutting in, centered. It went wide. Puck came behind the net. Ryan Curran and Sylvain Turgeon going at it. Here's Freer. Pass came into Maurice with a shot. The glove save made by Jordan Willis. Derek Smith in his own end. Pass to Chris Jensen. He'll bring it across the line and dump the puck in. Jakes in behind the net. He'll roll into the near side for Mike or uh, Mark Freer. Out of Maurice. That is too far. And the K Wings go back as we're down to the final minute of play in the first period. A scoreless hockey game. Kevin Meehan shoots one into Arrow territory. Gamble gives it a swat along the boards. Kelly Hurt trying to clear it in there. He's battling with Brad Berry along the board. The puck came in front. Here's a shot by Meehan. Gamble, a left-hand save, and then O'Connor steers one right in there. Brad Berry set one in there nicely, and Joy Gamble makes the nice save. Time for our Shots on Goal brought to you by Suzuki. And you can ask anyone who owns one. Shots on goal thus far, 8-4 in favor of the Michigan K-Wings. And on that play, a smart play by Barry, who feeds the puck in there, looking for the rebound, and he got the rebound. The only thing is Miles O'Connor was right on top of it and was able to just kick it back to Troy Gamble, who made the save. But I tell you what, this is how we saw one of the goals scored the other night as Mark Freer got a rebound off of Turgeon. Well, same situation here, except the uh, Michigan K-Wings tried to do the same to the Arrows. 
A-Wings back in their own end. It's out at center, and Valamont shoots one into the Michigan end. Turned away, and here come the K-Wings. Out at center, Patrick Cote brings it across the line. Zach Boyer after it, worked it through Valamont. Yo trying to golf it along the boards. He and Kevin Meehan battle for it. Boyer spins it along the boards. Conroy got over there. Arrows can't clear. Here's Boyer, base of the right circle, centered one. Cote had to fish for it, get it back, Boyer. He centered it again, but Mark Lamb was waiting, and he'll move it up the boards and out at center ice. Five seconds to go, and the period will be over. Now the ice, this one goes, and that will be the end of the first period as the horn sounds. So 20 minutes of action have been played here in Michigan, and a defensive struggle. Uh, the goaltender's not tested very much, but we're scoreless, and we'll have more right after this. Welcome back to Wings Stadium. Adam Gordon along with Mike Greenlay. A scoreless hockey game. I'm a little surprised by this. Well, actually, Adam, I, I'm not surprised. In a rink like this, that's why Kalamazoo is fifth in the IHL with uh, the goals against because you get a small rink like this, there's not a lot of room to maneuver, and, and therefore, there's not a lot of good goal-scoring chances. The Kalamazoo, the KZU Wings got some good chances near the end of the first period there, but not a lot to uh, talk about it uh, on the arrow side. And Dave Tiffin has been waiting for this for quite a while waiting for his forechecking scheme to work. The K-Wings, I think, finished with nine shots in that first period. Arrow's only got three, which might be a bit of concern, but at least his team's sinking defense first. Well, yeah, definitely. And the thing is that uh, the KZU Wings got got their most of their shots on their first power play, but weren't able to put uh, the, the pucks uh, in the net. So the Arrows and the K-Wings are scoreless, and Carl Valamont, I believe, is standing by. Carl, uh, are you surprised by the outcome of that first period? Well, yeah, uh, we, uh, the game plan was to uh, come out strong in the first for us because uh, we knew Kalamazoo was going to come out uh, hard because their coach kind of gave him uh, kind of a, a tongue lashing last night after they uh, lost to Indy 6-1. Uh, to one. So we knew they were going to come out hard. Uh, Troy uh, Gamble has been playing un unbelievable, and uh, he made some real great stops in that period uh, to keep us in the game. Carl, last night you played in your 500th IHL game. Was that uh, a big a big game for you, or was it just just one of that other game? Well, I think as you go along your career, you uh, the more you play, the less you think about it. Uh, you know, 300, 400, 500 comes along, and and you kind of take it in stride. But I think uh, you look around and you see that you you've uh, put some years in the league for sure. Carl, a glimmer of chance for the Arrows to get into the playoffs, but all that aside, how do the team approach now the next several games? Well, the the thing we're doing is we're going out, uh, obviously, to win every game. Uh, obviously, we still think we have a chance, all the guys in the locker room, to uh, to make the playoffs. Until we're mathematically uh, eliminated, uh, we're going to keep thinking that way. Uh, the, the, the plan is just to, uh, you know, play as hard as we can. we gotta, we got to walk around with our heads up, and uh, the way you do that is to, to win games down the stretch. Carl, for, for a while there, the Arrows seemed to play a couple games and have a week off, a couple games and another week off, and, and now a pretty consistent uh, amount of games. Do the guys like that a lot better? Well, you know, it's a double-edged sword there. You know, you, you go along and you play a couple games a week uh, for a month or whatever, and now uh, you're playing uh, four games in five nights the last two weeks. Uh, you know, there, there's really no happy media, and everyone, I guess, would like to play every other night if you could uh, if you could have it your own way. But, uh, you know, you take the games as they come. Uh, I think it's easier to play the more, uh, you know, like if you play three and three, uh, I think it's easier to play three and three than it is to play once every, uh, once every week. six games you've been the best defenseman you've got four assists in your last six games how do you feel well I feel good about myself I mean I haven't played too many games this year I think I've only played about 45 or, or 50 and uh, I still feel pretty fresh uh, you know I told tip I appreciate the opportunity to play and uh, you know as things worked out this year it's funny I came here at the beginning they had nine defensemen I wasn't supposed to play and uh, before you know it you're down to five and you're a forward and now you're one of the regular six so uh, I've enjoyed myself this year I mean it's been it's been tough sledding at times but uh, you know all you can do is put your best foot forward and hope for the best and your daughter just had a birthday right and my son two years old Lane yeah oh, good. congratulations thank you Thanks. for stopping by you bet guys all right that's defenseman Carl Valamont and happy birthday to Lane Valamont and uh, right now scoreless hockey game, and we'll have more from K-Wing Stadium when we return Stadium, everybody. Adam Gordon with 
Mike Greenlay, a scoreless hockey game after 20 minutes of play and a defensive struggle. Uh, as we said, not a lot of shots on goal. Is that beneficial uh, to the Houston Arrows? I think it is. I think the Arrows last night showed that it was. They were 1-1 after two periods and then in their best period, their third period, came out and blew Cleveland away with five goals. So I think if they can keep it tight coming down the stretch here with uh, Michigan, I think that'll benefit them because remember, it's a second game, uh, two, out of, two out of three games and three nights. So I think they need to keep that kind of game uh, intact. Each team had their own power play opportunity in the period. Referee Al Kimmel, I thought let him play and let him get away with some things, which is fine as long as you keep it consistent, which he did. Uh, what are your thoughts as far as Al Kimmel letting him go like that? I, I like that. I like a referee that's going to let someone, uh, let the guys go for a while and let them uh, get away with a few things. And, you know, as long as he's taking care of the, the major things like he did that period, I think it, the players like that, they enjoy being able to, to skate, the, skate throughout the game and, and not worry about getting called for every little itty bitty thing. How about the, the, the style of the game? It, it, a lot of trapping going on, but a lot of physical play going on. This could very easily be what we see tonight, scoreless game. Yeah, and that's true. And that's, that's the, like I said, that's the kind of game you're going to get here in, uh, at the at the K-Wings arena because it's it's there's not a lot of room to maneuver out there. And that's why a guy like Slavchenko uh, is going to be trying to trying to do the best that he can because he's a guy that likes open ice, but there's just not a lot of open ice there. And actually, I thought Slivy had a pretty good period. He opened up the Jets, created some chances, and uh, actually also had a run-in with Jordan Willis, the goaltender. When we return, we'll have the highlights from that first period. This is Saturday Night on Ice. Scoreless hockey game here at Wings Stadium. And uh, tell you what, Mike Greenlay, uh, the Arrows facing nine shots, Troy Gamble facing nine shots. And you know what? He wasn't tested a lot, but when he was, he had to come to the task, and he was terrific. Well, hey, he's at home. He played in this building. I mean, uh, in 92-93, he played quite a few games in this building, and, and he's showing that he's comfortable here. He did make some good saves, and you know what? He looks like he's regained that uh, the, the play that he had in February there, making uh, unbelievable saves and really standing on his ear, and uh, that's good to see. I'm glad uh, Gams has found his game again. And the highlights will show that Troy Gamble had a terrific period. Yeah, he did have a terrific period, and uh, it all started out... Uh, I tell you what, the K-Wings doing some smart things, getting shots on goals and going for the rebound. Here in this case, Miles O'Connor's right on top of that rebound and he kicks it to Troy Gamble to not allow them to get in there. Troy Gamble was strong in that situation, but he was strong in others as well. And he was a little bit lucky to boot. A good hard shot from the point there and just it might have gone off the defense, but I'm not sure. I think it was Zach Boyer and he eventually tinged it off the post and we heard that all the way up to the broadcast booth, but Gamble sharp anyways and I tell you what then there's a flurry in front and Gamble is, is, is actually very good on scrambles he's, he's been he's really improved in that area this year as he's uh, getting across that net very well his lateral movement has really improved and you can see it on all the saves that he's making there using every part of his body all right that takes us to our first period stance and they're brought to you by your local Texas Chrysler Plymouth dealer shots on goal 9-7 or 9-4 in favor of the Michigan K-Wings as we said both teams had a power play to work with and each team had 12 minutes in penalty Greener, here's the question, as well as Troy Gamble has been playing, does he go tomorrow if he continues this way? Well, I, I don't think I would. Uh, Dob Dobber was playing good when he was in Kansas City. He said he was he was starting to have fun again. So I think uh, come back with Dobson and throw him back in there in Fort Wayne. It's going to be a tough game. But, uh, you know, you don't want to tire, tire uh, Gams out because it's, it's a tough trip. Not five games in nine days. Yeah, I think both goaltenders would like to have a crack at the Fort Wayne Comets, a team the Arrows have just not beaten this year. They seem to have all kinds of problems in Fort Wayne. And, 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 and it's not just small problem. I mean, they're getting blown out there. Remember, they lost 7-3 opening night. They got hammered again, what, 8-4 there a week ago or 7-4 a week ago? And uh, they, they, both goalies want another chance. Yeah, it's a tough building to win in uh, regardless. And so, uh, yeah, you're right. Both both teams, want, both guys want another crack at that team. All right. But right now, we got to worry about the Michigan K-Wings. It is scoreless after 20 minutes of action. We'll bring in the second period right after this. We are ready for the start of the second period of action as the Arrows giving their last words of encouragement to goaltender Troy Gamble, who made nine saves on nine shots in the first period. On the other side of things, four shots were put on Jordan Willis. Not really tested too much, but Jordan Willis handled himself pretty well, and he's getting his last bits of wordage as he gets his goal crease ready. And 
Well, I asked you this before, and I want to want you to go over it again. As far as a goaltender, when you played, what was your basic routine before the game as far as getting the crease scratched? I mean, did you give it really scratched, or you just give it kind of a weak one-two? It's funny you ask that. A lot of you watch some goalies, and they they barely nick the <laughs> nick the crease, and other guys, it looks like a snowstorm hit. So it's funny. My my routine, I just go uh, once down and come back out on top, and come and once back. So I'd I'd get it pretty good though on, on just one pass on each. Uh, on, on the crease and then uh, above the crease, but some guys go <laughs> go way out there. It's kind of funny to watch. Somebody told me you snuck out the back where the Zamboni was and grabbed a whole bunch of snow and shoved it right in front of your net and built a wall. Secret of my success, Adam. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's why I can't see the ice. I'm blinded by the glisten of your Turner Cup ring. <laughs> The cause and effect, if you will. Puck is in the Michigan K-Wing zone. As the K-Wings have it in their own end. Here's a puck that's tipped away. Arrows get it. Mark Lamb turning left side. Cranked the drive and a shoulder save made by Jordan Willis. Puck is batted out at center ice. And Krepke turns it back in. That will be a offsides call as Derek Martin, the linesman, makes the call. And they'll bring the face off back out at center ice. Big Gord Krupke, uh Still looking, as we said, for his first goal of the season. He's and he's not an offensive specialist, although he does get into the play and he has been getting in the play more often. He really is a terror in front of that net for the arrows. Really clears the bodies out in front, and that's uh, one of the reasons they acquired him is for uh, his tenacity in front of his own net, and he does a good job defensively there. Freer comes out with Sylvain Turgeon, Mike Maurice, Jackson Valamont defensively, Robert Petrovichki with Shane Peacock. Also out there is Jim Storm off the draw. The K-Wings have it defensively. It's Gusev that cleared it out at center. Jakes winds it back into the Michigan zone. Jordan Willis knocked it down. And he left it on the dasher. That's interesting. Never seen a goaltender do that. Leave it up on the dasher. Here's Gusev right side. Dump the puck into the arrow in. Jay, er, uh, Gamble. They're working ahead for Valamont. Pass missing Freer. It went back into the Houston end, and Valamont hustles back to get it. Kyle Valamont in the corner with, as we said in the intermission, four assists. 0 and 4. No goals, four assists in his last six games. K Wings with the puck. Pass came through Shane Peacock. It's rolled away by Houston, and Petrovichki got it right back for the K Wings. Sends it back into his own end, and there was Brian Curran to move it out at center, and here comes Shane Peacock across the line, dropped it back, Jim Storm shoots, Gamble stick save, rebound, shot save made by Gamble, and the puck is picked up by the K-Wings, back to the line. Aaron Smith, the shot right on, Gamble save, rebound, there was Jim Storm, and he'll cut in, shoot, and that's blocked as the Arrows try to weather the storm, and it's picked up by Mike Maurice, and shot out at center, Turgeon. Through the neutral zone for Maurice. Trying to get around Travis Richards. Chipped it behind the net. Richards got it back. And it's blasted away. But the K-Wings will just go right back down the ice with it. And Miles O'Connor will hustle back to play. And this will produce an icing call with two minutes gone by in the second period. No score. I think this is the kind of rink that you're going to have to put that kind of pressure on a goaltender to score on them. And then, as we said earlier, this is the perfect kind of rink that you can hem someone in their own zone. And uh, I'll tell you what, the Kazoo Wings do that right here. Gamble had to make a couple saves in a row and then get up and make them again as the Arrows weren't able to get the puck out. But some good shots, and you, you can tell what their strategy right now. The Wings are getting a shot on goal and driving guys to the net for that rebound. They do have a big hockey club, very large in size. And that's where they can be effective. Bashkatov into the slot, trying to roll one away. That was knocked away, and the K-Wings have a four on three. Zach Boyer across the line. Boyer shoots, gambles, stick save. Picked up by Cote. Rolled one for Kevin Meehan to fire, and Slivchenko will move it up for Bashkatov. It's right back out at center. Darren Smith for Michigan, trying to get the puck ahead. Sean O'Brien knocked it down as he's in for Gord Donnelly tonight, serving a one-game suspension for picking up his third game misconduct last night against Cleveland. Miles O'Connor flings the puck into the Michigan end. Out of the net, it was Jordan Willis. Played with the puck a little bit and almost got caught out. But here is Kevin Meehan. Give it ahead to Zach Boyer. He'll move it through the neutral zone and crank one into the arrow. And that was deflected away. And the K-Wing trying to get in there. Fighting for it was Krupke for Houston. They battle some more. Krupke in a good battle near side with Zach Boyer. Bashkatov loosened it up, but it's jumped on by Neil Brady. Across the line, Brady trying to get around Bashkatov. Cannot do it. And the Arrows roll the puck away. Three minutes gone in the second. No score. 
Neil Brady for Michigan chipped it back along the boards and Kupke got it back and it's now Kelly Hurd. Hurd for Houston right through the neutral zone shoots the puck in stick save made by Willis. Brad Berry goes back Hurd takes him to the wall puck came out in front arrows got it here's Conroy shoots wow what a save by Jordan Willis getting his stick on it and the puck resting on the top of the net and play is whistled down three and a half gone in the second period and we are scoreless this is Saturday night on ice. Flying to New Orleans for business? If these 20 reasons don't convince you to fly Southwest Airlines to New Orleans, maybe this will. Fly Southwest, the low fare airline. Don't miss the wild, wild rate. Now playing at a Texas Jeep and Eagle dealer near you. Starring Grand Cherokee Laredo. Voted best full-size sport utility by the Texas Auto Writers Association. Directed by Chrysler Financial. An incredibly wild rate of just $2.98 a month. But if you want to get Grand Cherokee for $2.98 a month, you'd better get a move on. Because come March 31st, see your Texas Jeep and Eagle dealer today. Back at uh, K-Wings Arena as the Arrows get a good chance on goal as Conroy will pick up a puck. Hurd does a lot of the work to get it free and Conroy will get a good chance but doing some acrobatics is uh, Jordan Willis and the puck dances off the crossbar and finally settles on top of the net. Conroy trying to poke it free. He leads the Arrows in goals at 23 and almost finds another one. He didn't want to bat that one in with a high stick, so he just let it do its work, but unfortunately, it hit the crossbar and stayed on top of the net. Loose puck picked up by Michigan, cleared to the line, not out. Second effort is out there, and here comes Storm, scrambling into the zone. It came out this Shane Peacock, but he couldn't get a good shot away. Hurlbut takes him to the wall. Petrovicki got it back to the line. Brian Curran, long shot wide, came out in front. Here's the chance, but Conroy was right there, and he fired that right into the K-wing bench. With 16 11 to go in the second period no score what do the arrows have left well they've got Fort Wayne tomorrow they're in Orlando Indy Michigan that'll wrap up the five game road trip they've got two left at home then Cleveland they've got top look at that every one of the teams are top notch teams in the IHL they've all got winning records and it's going to be tough for Atlanta to win but they do have the advantage the magic number is at three the arrows of course the this Graphic doesn't show that the arrows are obviously here tonight, and it doesn't show that Atlanta is at home hosting Cleveland. They'll have Cleveland back to back tonight and tomorrow. So Cleveland will be in three games in three nights. So you got to think Atlanta's got a really good chance tomorrow. The puck came in, and Kupke's there to knock it away. But I think Carl Valamont summed it up pretty good. He says, We're here to win. We're going to come out and play every game and try and win as many as we can down the stretch. And everybody in that locker room still thinks they have a chance. And that's the important thing. If there's guys in there that don't think they have a chance, then you're in trouble. You're already beat if that happens. Right. right. Here's a shot by Hurlbut, and Jordan Willis makes the save, and he will cover up and hold on, and then turned it around. Felt that maybe uh, the referee was going to call a penalty because he didn't hear the whistle, and he's got to keep the puck in motion. Puck came out at center. Gusev trying to move it ahead. He was hauled down by Jake's but play moves on. And the arrows rolled away. Valamont to the near side. Turgeon. Give it to Mark Lamb. He'll move it out at center. Now Valamont ripped it into the Michigan zone. Score! Carl Valamont from center ice. And the only problem with that goal is it didn't come in the circle. It was beyond the circle. And Valamont once again labels one from long distance. And it's a 1-0 hockey game. Well, Al Conroy actually jumped up in the air just before Valamont took the shot. And I tell you what, I think it dipped or it hit someone because this puck did some funny stuff as it dipped underneath of Jordan Willis's glove. I tell you what, Jordan Willis would normally stop that, but I tell you, it was just a funny goal and a kind that goaltenders don't like to give up, but this one did some acrobatics before it went in the net as it just dives. And I tell you what, sometimes when that puck uh, gets, gets on its edge like that, it acts like a baseball, and that was a heck of a sinker that Valamont pitched in there. Yeah, I guess if you can say if a Houston arrow shoots the puck like that, it's called aerobatics. <laughs> yeah. So uh, Valamont will get his fourth goal of the year and give the arrows a one nothing lead almost, uh, well, five minutes into this the second that's, period. That's Colin King Midas now, because everything he touches is turning to gold. I mean, his four goals are good shots, but they're, they're low, 
they're low percentage as far as goaltenders playing the angles. They're from a distance. But I'll tell you what, I guess you can't call him low percentage if he's putting them in the way he has. Meehan with a quick shot and Gamble the stick save. Arrows jump out and have a 1 0 lead in the second period. Meehan back to the slot. The shot right on. Gamble makes the save and he will hold on. And once again, Cote tied up with Steve Jakes. Well, even if that goal doesn't go in, I think you, you notice something right at the beginning of this period. And I think the players were tired of playing defensive hockey because both teams had some good opportunities right off the bat. Gamble made a couple saves and then uh, Willis made a couple saves. The one off the crossbar that Conroy uh, chipped away at. But I tell you what, it takes a it takes an awkward goal to get the scoring uh, on the roll and the arrows have jumped out to a one nothing lead. Kevin Meehan to take the face off against Mark Freer. Sticks down and the arrows have it. It's O'Connor to Maurice. He scooped it out at center. And the K-Wings regroup Smith. That's Darren Smith. Shoots the puck along the boards. It's along the dashers. Cote dropped it down there. Puck in along the boards and then it came out in front. Gamble got a piece of it now dung out by Kevin Meehan. Meehan circles left side, getting sent as he went, worked back to the line. O'Connor's got him tied up. They bang and crash along the board. Puck is in there, and Gamble's going to take no chances. He's going to line. Now Cote and O'Brien get into it. Now O'Brien fought in the first period with Lawrence. He fought with uh, Mark Lawrence in that first period, but Troy Gamble doing a terrific job. Let's go down to Rob Dobson, uh, who's standing by. And Dauber, what's with Carl Vallum on his long shots this season? <laughs> Carl's got one of those shots that either goes really high or really low and as you saw there it was a bit of a knuckleball and you know they're the kind of breaks that uh, you need to get to win on the road and it was kind of dropped on uh, on Willis but you know he's got a good shot it's one of those things every time you shoot on net it has a chance to go in and unfortunately it did. Is this one of the classic road games for you guys just keeping it simple tonight? Yeah I think it is and we knew how Kalamazoo played you know everyone's been in the league a long time and they know how they operate. They're pretty much a first period hockey club. They try to get up on you early and we played smart in the first period. Now it's important that we get some good chances here in the second. Thanks Dauber. Puck is picked up by the K-Wings. They'll clear to the line and out at center. And a pass for Chris Jensen trying to get by O'Connor. He's in and oh there's the big lasso by Miles O'Connor. And that's a penalty he had to take. As Jensen kind of got by him a little bit. Now Brad Berry staring at one of the arrows. Sean O'Brien again. So John O'Brien get his nose dirty, dirty tonight, but Miles O'Connor will be the one to go to the box. Well, when you get into the lineup, you want to try and stay in the lineup, and O'Brien is trying to make his mark as Miles O'Connor goes to the penalty box. All right, there's a timeout on the ice. We will do the same. one nothing. The Arrows lead, and we'll bring you the Michigan power play after this. Texas goes for trucks in a Texas-sized way where their heart is work or hard at play. Texas goes for trucks, it goes to the store, selling Magnum Rams, Dakotas, and more. The Texas truck stop can do Dodge. Dodge Ram offers better resale value than Ford, Chevy, or GMC, plus up to $670 in savings, too. Put your brand on a new Ram now. The Texas truck stop the new Dodge. On the next Renegade. <laughs> It's the biggest bounty of their careers. The Spano family is one of the strongest mob holdouts in this town. We can put them all out of business for good. And it's the deadliest game of their lives. This guy is a stone killer. He killed his cousin, and he'll kill you if you look at him. Reno, Six Killer, and Chai take on the mob. Drop the gun! Sugar Ray Leonard guest stars on the next Renegade. Tonight at 10 on UPN 20. Back at Wing Stadium, as Jensen gets a step on Miles O'Connor, he'll get around him, and O'Connor has nothing left to do but haul him down, and the K-Wings are on a power play right now. Second chance of the night on the man advantage. Shane Peacock, quarterbacks at the point. Worked it down along the boards for Petrovicki. It is Robert Petrovicki. Cuts it down, left side. Here's a shot to one just behind the net, and it'll go all the way back to the line where Gusev held. Right side, Petrovicki. In a battle with Hurlbut, picked up by Jim Storm. Chipped it back, here's the shot. Score! <laughs> like shot from the top of the slot. It's a power play goal and the K-Wings tie the game at one. Well, Peacock does let all of this one go and I tell you what, with his 18th goal of the season, ties his game up and what a good hard shot it was. He went against the grain on Gamble. Gamble coming across as he saw the puck coming out to the slot and 
Peacock really labeled this one right inside the corner. And without Langenbrunner in the lineup, and of course Daniel Mara being traded, he's the leading scorer on this team tonight. And he does so in fashion there with his 18th of the season. A great shot right inside the post on the power play. Well, and he's an interesting story last year, too, because he was drafted in 91 by Pittsburgh, but he led all rookies last year for the K-Wings with 36 points, and he was also the top-scoring defenseman. Now the puck brought in, and Slipchenko given a big hip check and brought down to the ice. Puck back to the line. Here's Valamon. Oh, he's too close to the net, so he'll have to dump the puck in. <laughs> got it behind the net, and the puck resting on the back. Okay. Yeah, Carl, you got to be past the blue line to shoot it. That's the new rule now. <laughs> Carl Valamont's going to get the puck in the slot, and he's going to curl around the red line. <laughs> Let one go. The only guy know to regroup the shoot. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, good job by the Arrows, but they... Peacock doing a good job on the power play. You know, it's a kind of rink where you can really do a good job on the, in the on the penalty kill with the box because, it, like you said, it's not that wide of a rink, and uh, really it it, it it limits the 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 slot a lot as to breaking guys in there and getting on the puck. So Peacock takes the next advantage, and that is from the point, and he drills one right inside the post to tie the game up. Well, K-Wings trying to do something tonight as Jakes rips a shot and Willis makes a save. K-Wings trying to do something they have not done in their existence, and that's defeat Houston in this building. They are 0-2 against Houston. They got beat last year and got beat earlier this year. Clock is out at center ice. Mike Maurice trying to work one ahead. It was behind Terzhaw. Turned around by Chris Jensen. He'll dump the puck into the arrow end. Jakes is there. Ripped it off the boards. It came out at center. Travis Richards takes a bump, and the arrows jump on it, and it's Steve Jake. Give it to Carl Valamont. Quick pass up the center for Maurice. He'll bring it across the line with Freer and Terzhaw. Maurice gives to Sylvain Terzhaw, wheeling in behind the net. Looks for a man to pass to. Still the puck is Terzhaw. Nice pass. O'Brien right in with a shot, but he had a tough angle because diving in front of him was uh, Darren. Aaron Smith, O'Brien trying to find one uh, through a, a traffic of players there, but uh, could not do it. Yeah, it was unfortunate. As soon as he picked his head up, all he saw was body, <laughs> and that's where he put the puck. If he could have made another move, he might have been able to find another player on the back door. You see him pick his head up if you're enjoying the game on UPN 20 and streaking to the back door there. It looks like Mike Maurice, and if he could have just pulled the puck around to Fallen Smith and just slid it over to Maurice, he might have had a great opportunity, but, you know, that, that's why they say play with your head up. Face off at the circle to the right side of Jordan Willis. Lamb, Conroy, and Erd with O'Connor and O'Brien. I guess... This is the Notre Dame line with O'Brien and O'Connor. It's O'Connor with a shot right on Willis. Save, rebound. It was tipped away. And Cote will move it up ice. Patrick Cote gives to Zach Boyer and across the line. He's got Cote in front, but couldn't redirect it. A good pass, but one that Cote couldn't find the handle on. It is O'Connor to Kelly Hur. Trying to move one ahead, and here come the Euros. They'll scamper to center ice. O'Brien jumps in to join the rush. Conroy, right side. Center to Hurd. Shot just smacked wide of the net. Now another chance. It's slammed in behind the cage. Battle for it now. Brian Curran, and now Conroy going to go at it. And Conroy picking up Brian Curran and throwing him down to the ice and everybody getting in there. So Al Conroy, all five foot eight of them, getting in there. And now O'Connor trying to drag one of the K-Wings out of there. Kelly Hurd is in there. But Brian Curran is currently on the ice without Conroy draped all over him. Well, we talked so much about veterans, and Curran was drafted way back in 82 and has played for many teams, as you said. And I tell you what, he gets in there with Conroy, and Conroy is a pretty feisty guy. Well, Curran's 6'4". Conroy actually took that knee last night from uh, Victor Gervais and went down on the ice hard, and uh, we thought we'd lose him for a while. Conroy, a real tough customer, was... Uh, taking treatments today and everything and and finally uh, was able to play but I'll tell you what it's good to see as he was you know all, almost didn't play because of a, a Charlie horse that he received last night it's good to see him in the lineup well and also the Iron Man he's played in every game <laughs> this year so I, I think that's I think that's one of the motivating factors too actually Malgunas was kind of playing a joke on him before the game he Malgunas went in there and and uh, and, and packed all the gear had already been unpacked uh, and hung up and everything <laughs> well Malgunas was in there jamming his stuff in the bag no <laughs> yeah <laughs> kind of funny you saying, all right but away you go but Get well, Al Conroy, uh, you got to do a little more than that <laughs> yeah. to keep him on. And I'll tell you what, I don't know if Al Conroy is the kind of guy you want to play practical jokes on. 
I'll tell you, I, I've uh, seen, I've had the pleasure of seeing Al Conroy pull a few on his teammates. <laughs> so as they sort the penalties out, we're in a 1-1 game, a pretty tight hockey game. The Arrows looking for their second win in the row, and, and like we said, they need all they can get right now as they're trying to chase down the Atlanta Knights, and the Atlanta Knights have a pretty tough schedule going down the rest of the way, but it looks like Curran will probably get the extra two minutes. So the Arrows will go on the power play. I'm mistaken. They finally put the other ah. two minutes up for Conroy. I think why do I listen to you? I don't know. But uh, anyways, it looks like it's going to be even up four on four. And hey, this will open up the ice a little bit. Lamb, Hurd, O'Brien, O'Connor. I like that. The fighting Irish of the Houston Arrows. O'Brien and O'Connor. It is Travis Richards off the faceoff. He'll turn the puck down and it'll move in behind the net for Darren Smith. Worked it back. Here come the K-Wing, Shane Peacock, who's got the Michigan tally. Scampers across the line, dropped it for Petrovitsky, right in, shoots that hit Campbell upstairs on him. And it's picked up by Lamb and worked up. And here come the arrows. O'Connor. Quick pass for Hurd. Through the neutral zone, he comes as he dumps the puck in. And then he gives Darren Smith a little bit of a shot to try and get around him. Here's a puck rolled away. It's Darren Smith on defense to the right side. Smith worked the puck ahead, trying to feed Petrovitsky. It came down to the near side, and Mark Lamb is there. Rolled behind the net. Lamb trying to move it away, and here come the arrows. It is out at center. O'Brien giving it to Slipchenko. Makes the move, trying to cut in around Darren Smith. Puck came in front, but Smith got there, and now it is Brad Berry who takes it. Berry rolled it along the boards, and he'll move it up ice. Or excuse me. Puck comes out at center. Now the puck across the line. Here comes Krupke. Centered one. That went through the crease. Picked up by Hurlbutt. By Hurlbutt down the left side. Worked it in behind the net. Brad Berry is there. He'll take the puck away and chip one along the near side. And the K-Wings have got it. Peacock. Out along the right side. Got the puck into arrow territory with 10.23 to go in the second tie to one. 33 seconds to go. In the period, or in the penalties, 10 18 to go in the period. Puck goes down the ice. Sergei Gusev is there to play it, and icing is the call. 10 13 to go in the second period. We're tied at one. After a pretty good flurry at the start of the second period, Adam, things have kind of slowed down again as both teams said, well, we're not sure what kind of style of game they want to play. Of course, the whole first period was really defensive and not a lot of action. And uh, you came out in the second period, opened things up a bit, but have shut it right back down again. And uh, Mark Freer, who picked up his points last night, two points against the Cleveland Lumberjacks. Those are the only points since the Arneal trade, but, you know, in talking with him, he's had to adjust a little bit. You know, he finally got going with Scott Arneal, and then, of course, Arneal got traded. And he's had trouble trying to adjust to Sylvain Turgeon a little bit. Puck right on as Gamble makes the save. After it, Tevin Meehan. He's watched by Carl Valamont, but the pass intercepted by Mark Freer, and then Freer turned it back, and Troy Gamble will play it over to Steve Jakes. He'll smack it behind the net, and it's Carl Valamont with 9.48 to go. In the second period, tied to one. Freer across the line, pass came to Conroy, drilled a shot. Willis makes the save. In there is Turgeon trying to wrestle that away. It's picked up by Michigan, and they're out at center. Gusev dumped the puck in. Gamble makes the save. Jakes goes back to roll it away from Derek Smith that came to the near side. Lamb will move it out at center. Brad Berry is back. And he'll shoot it into the arrow end. Valamont hustles back. He's got Chris Jensen on him. They both go careening into the boards. Here's Neil Brady trying to center one. They came back to Derek Smith. Danced it back right point. Got it down. Here's Jensen trying to shake off the check. Jensen center one. Nice pass. Smith right in. Gibble save. Rebound. No. Troy Gamble. Right in front. He had Neil Brady. Right in front, but it might as well have been Greg Brady in front, but there was Troy Gamble with a terrific, terrific save. Well, he's played with a few guys, these guys before, and he's probably giving them the gears right now as he makes a good save, but the puck slides right through, and it just creeps towards the line as Brady's in there trying to jam away at it. And as you said, you're going to have the whole family in there, but it didn't <laughs> matter because Gamble, uh, in a fine fashion, jumps on that puck as Jakes is in there working for it too. But tell you what, Gamble has been making a lot of those acrobatic saves tonight and has done that for the past few games, and that's why he started four in a row. 
And a face off to the left side of Troy Gamble who has now faced 24 shots. That means he has faced uh, 18 in this period. Puck came to the line, not out. Here's a quick shot that went wide. Arrows have it, Miles O'Connor steers one along the boards. It's held in at a right point. Worked it down, it went behind the net. Out of the net, Troy Gamble poked it fireside. Neil Brady, he's bumped by O'Brien. Freer trying to move it along the boards. It's picked up and shot in front of Chance, but O'Connor thwarts that. O'Brien trying to move it through the crease here now, or out of the corner, and he had a man to move it to, but it's picked up by Neil Brady. Brady scooped it back along the left side for Eric Smith. He's tied up by Freer. Smith shakes off the check. Comes in behind the net. Now wrap around. Blocked by Freer. Smith again shoulder to shoulder with Freer. Now O'Connor comes in to lend a hand. It's Brady behind the net trying to stuff one in there. Brady sweeping away at it. The arrows finally move it away as Gamble had lost his stick on the play. Here's Terjean trying to bust in around Curran. Cranks the drive. That was blocked right by Sergei Gusev. And he felt that one. I felt it for him. The puck goes down the ice or in behind the net. K-Wings clear it right back out at center and into Arrow territory. Hurlbutt shot it at center. And Petrovicki trying to turn around now. That's not too many men on the ice right there. I don't know what it is. Like we said, uh, Al Kimmel's going to probably let the guys play unless it's a blatant call. All right. Puck is shot into the arrow end. Campbell forts that away. And it's Mike Yo. Chip pass out at center for Bashkatov. Knocked away but picked up by Slivchenko. Across the line, Slavchenko, quick shot right on. Willis make the blocker shame, and he will cover up and hold on. Timeout on the ice, 7.34 to go in the second period. We are tied at one. Saturday Night on Ice continues after this. Whataburger wants to know, what's your number? I'm a four. I'm a two guy. Number one, or if I was real hungry, probably the number two. We have eight great Wada meals. Each one comes complete with fries and a drink. And now we're offering a special Wada meal featuring our crispy Wada Catch fish sandwich. I'm a three. I'm a four. And they're all at great low prices. I'm a number two. So when it comes to good food at a great price, Whataburger's got your number. Uh, no me do no. Number one. He's a five and I'm a ten. What you waiting for? <laughs> At Clearlight Dodge, we stay open until midnight to save you money on over 200 brand new full-size Dodge Ram pickups. Hey, truck buyers, Tom Park here in our showroom. If you're looking for the best selection of club cabs, you're going to find them here at your Dodge truck stop. Half tons, three-quarter tons, two- and four-wheel drive, whatever you're looking for. Right now, you can buy a brand new full-size extended Dodge Ram club cab for only $16.9 with the V8. That's why we sell more. We sell them for less. And we're open every Sunday and every night until midnight at Clearlight Dodge. Tomorrow night at 7, a police station held hostage is the latest mission for the Sentinel. Then Matt Swift must protect a model from a menacing stalker on Swift Justice. The action begins tomorrow at 8 on UPN 20. Face off in the circle to the right side of Jordan Willis. And the K-Wings win the draw. It is Dennis Smith in the corner trying to bang away at one. They battle some more. Petrovicki had a look at it. It's picked up by Bashkatov. Slides one out in front, but Peacock cleared it out at center, and it's Jim Storm. Give it to Peacock. Right side, Petrovitsky cutting in, trying to move around, but there was Hurlbutt to knock it away. Puck is thwarted by Gamble, and here's a whistle as the arrow net has become dislodged, and there's 7.13 to go in the second. 1-1 one, one game. Jim Storm in there in front of the net, and Krupke pushed him into Gamble a little bit, and that popped the net up off its moorings, and so the faceoff will come to Gamble's uh, left. As uh, the K-Wings have taken over, uh, definitely in the shot department and the, probably the chance department as well. And the Arrows' lone goal was a, I, I don't want to call it a fluke goal, but I think that's probably what you could call it, is it was from just inside uh, the red line as he blasted it from the just halfway between the red line and blue line and it it did some uh, funny tricks and went into the net. Yeah, but I think Carl will go home and tell his daughter Lay and he'll say, you know what? I deeped out two defensemen, cut around three guys and beat him top shelf. He'll tell you, he was aiming for that corner. <laughs> <laughs> and he found it. <laughs> he did. Here's Peacock. He'll roll the puck away and K-Wing shoot the puck into the arrow and hustling back is Steve Chase. Now behind the net, Jim Storm. Storm base in the left circle. Cuts one back to the line. Dennis Smith winding, shooting. Puck deflected away. Now Storm again trying to slice one in there. Storm behind the net. Looks for a man to pass to. Storm. Looped it in behind the arrow net. Here's another penalty coming up. It's going to be a tripping minor. And now Shane Peacock getting in the middle of things. As we're going to have a penalty here coming up. 
and play halted. As Jake's getting into it in front of that net, I tell you. And it looks like it's definitely going to be penalties in this situation. All right, so the arrows. Let's see who the calls are going to be on. 6.35 to go, and let's take a look at tonight's second period save comparisons. They're sponsored by Pizza Hut, where Pizza Hut delivers, and the shot totals have added up as now it's 23 saves for Troy Gamble and 10 for Jordan Willis. Pizza Hut should send uh, Willis a pizza. He hasn't had a lot of action lately. Should send us. Okay, us too. Hey, <laughs> there's no I in team. <laughs> yeah, but there's an M in me. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> well, there was going to be a penalty, I think, on Steve Jakes, but now it's going to be even up as Shane Peacock got into it, so Al Kimmel evens things up. We talked about Shane Peacock is getting the only goal, and when you're a young fellow like that, you're leading the team. Bright future ahead, I'm sure. Here's Travis Richards, left side. Cuts in with a shot wide of the net. It'll roll along the boards, and Conroy will clear it out at center. The pass over to Mark Lamb. Two goals last night. Lamb trying to move in around the defense. Lamb looks for a man to pass to. Moving right wing. Lamb centering one. That's knocked away. In there fighting for it was Al Conroy. Came back to the line. O'Brien, the shot right on. Willis, the same. And he wasn't sure where that was. He looked behind him for a second. Thought maybe it got behind him, but no. Hold on. Sometimes when a puck hits your pad like that, and at the speed that it hit it, it was slowed down in front. You don't know. You actually don't feel the puck. What you like is a good hard shot that you can feel, and you know that you've kicked it to the corner. But this one, it comes through the crowd as O'Brien quickly has to get rid of it as he's being forechecked at the point. And I don't think Lamb got a piece of it, but it was screening Willis, and Willis just covers it up after he felt that, after he finally looked behind him and said, oh, I must have stopped this one. Face off in the circle. To the left side of Jordan Willis. We'll go four on four for another minute and a half. 6.05 to go in the second. Maurice and Turgeon with Sean O'Brien and Miles O'Connor. And O'Connor has the puck off the faceoff. Moving down the right side. Lost the handle on it. He and Brad Berry go sliding into the boards. K Wings move it and they'll bust it out. It is Neil Brady, right side, trying to move around Sean O'Brien. O'Brien split him up at the blue line, but Brady stayed with it, cutting in behind the net. Rolled it over for Brad Perry. He's tied up by Maurice, and it's taken away by O'Connor, and Turgeon will circle in his own end. Give it to O'Connor. Quick pass to Sean O'Brien, and up ice he comes. Rink wide pass behind Turgeon, just a hair, though. He's about well, six inches in front of him a little bit more there. Turgeon's got a scoring chance. Puck goes down the ice. After it, Valamont, Sergey Gusev got in there. Valamont's got it, and he'll move the puck up. Turn and shoot, Carl. There's the puck. I'm kidding, of course. Gives it over to Mike Earl, but and it's shot back out at center. Hey, if they're gonna go in like that, what the heck? Puck is brought in by Michigan. Bauer trying to center one. It was tipped away by O'Connor. It came back to the corner. Bauer trying to center one. It was over the stick of Petrovichki. He had to go back to gather it in. Petrovichki into the slot. Cuts left side. Turn. Shoot. Scamble. The save. He'll hold on and play halted with 4.53 to go in the second period. And play is whistled down. Gamble held that one under his arm as it almost trickled through. And as a goaltender, you feel that one under your arm and just squeeze it as you hold on. Your defenseman holding up everyone charging in, looking for that rebound. And Gamble squeezed his arm against his side and held that one for a whistle. 4.53 to go in the second period. We're tied at one. It looked like we were going to be entertained to a pretty good second period with a lot of shots. And then, as you mentioned, the last three minutes or so, it's come to a halt. Michigan has still found a way, though, to get some through there as Gamble has had some uh, some work. Willis has had a couple shots to contend with, but not really uh, the kind of shots that are going to beat a goaltender on a on a, a consistent basis. By the way, if you're wondering where Graham Townsend is tonight, he's out of the lineup as I look over to my right is given the night off by the coaches. And a face off in the circle to the right side of Mark Freer. Off the draw, it's Gord Kupke. He'll turn in behind the net, and Yo will bring it up ice with Freer. Mike Yo to the neutral zone. In 10 seconds, we'll be back at five aside. Puck in the Michigan zone. K Wings fight for it, bring it up ice. 
And it's Petrovicki through the neutral zone. Petrovicki, give it to Travis Richards. It's dumped down. Malamon is there. He'll scoop it along the boards as we're back to five aside. And here comes Mike Yo, a man to beat. It's Colin Bauer. Yo pulls up. Centered for Valamont. Turn. Centered for Freer. It was just behind him. And it's controlled by Jim Storm. Now Bauer takes over. And man pass for Storm. Cutting down the left circle, looking for Mitchell. And there was Kevin Meehan, got it back to the line. A long shot, changed direction on Gamble. They bang away at it. Somehow, I think Gamble got a piece of that one, and it's cleared back to the line, not out. Held in by Michigan. Meehan shoots, and that's blocked by Valamont. With under four minutes remaining in the second period. Battle for the punt, picked up by Michigan. Here comes a chance. Meehan, nice move, backhander. Gamble with a right pass. Save and a terrific spinning right pad save. Gusev trying to send one back down. Mitchell couldn't redirect. O'Connor takes Storm to the boards. And behind the net, it's Troy Gamble. He'll work one over to Mike Maurice, and the arrows are up ice. Maurice to Freer. Up ice it goes into the Michigan zone as the arrows make changes on the fly as we're down to the final three and a half for the second period. Gusev cleared to center. Turned away by O'Brien. Hoists it back into the Michigan zone. Kev Brian Kern goes back to play it, and it's out at center ice. Here come the K-Wings at neutral. Across the line, it's Kevin Meehan, belted by O'Brien, fishing for it a little bit in there. K-Wings trying to move it along, and finally whistle stops playing. We take time out. 3.05 to go in the second period. It's the Arrows one, the K-Wings one. We'll be right back. Decker Pizza from Pizza Hut. Six cheeses, two crusts, and one hellacious taste. With 25% more power, 16-inch wheels, dual airbags, side impact beams, and a new wider stance, it's one formidable 4x4. It'll take you to the top of the mountain or to the corner grocery. The new refined sidekick sport from Suzuki. Ask anyone who owns one. Now through March 31st, receive up to $1,000 cash back on a new sport through factory dealer incentives. Holly all new recruits, the Houston Arrows want you for a group outing. Just bring a group of 20 or more friends and you'll receive a discount on tickets, a welcome at the game, merchandise discounts, and a chance to win great prizes twice a year in the group sweepstakes. Also bring a group of 42 people to the game on the Arrow bus. For more information, call 627 AERO. Dennis Smith to shoot it into Arrow territory. Hockey goes back, clear to the line. Derek Smith held it in. It came back down. Chris Jensen playing peekaboo behind the net, trying to center one, but instead he'll stay with it. Threw it off the skate to Lamb and got by Travis Richards. Lamb trying to fight for it. A pass for Neil Brady across the line. Brady trying to move in. It was Jim White. Arrows rolling away. Lost in the crowd. Went into the rafters as Hurlbutt was tied up with one of the K-Wings as well down in front with Chris Jensen. Houston Arrows Hockey is sponsored in part by Bud Ice. They are the proud sponsors of the IHL. 2.17 to go in the second period. Coming out on the ice right now for the Arrows, trying to spur some offense. It'll be Bashkatov, Lomachenko, and Kershaw. Bashkatov was not capable for the game last night. Came out like a house of fire with these two tail off a little bit. Just wanted to pick up his play a little bit here and see if he can get her going. go with 
offense as the puck is chipped away. Now and behind the net here is Turgeon trying to cut in. Bashkatov gathered it in behind the net. Slavchenko centered. Turgeon the shot and a great save made by Jordan Willis. Well, if nothing else, that'll turn into a scoring chance for Dave Tippett's club. But Still can't find a way to get it by Jordan Willis. He'll hold on with 1.39 to go in the second tie to one. Well, the strategy was good as they did get some offense. Turgeon gets flattened, but not before getting a great shot on goal. Willis had to be sharp as they just cycle the puck back out in front and a good pad save by Willis. Willis was is not a very big goalie and he was standing on his goal line, so he had to be quick with his pad as Turgeon drove one in there and that line working well together on that shift, trying to get the lead going into this third period. Face off in the circle to the right side of Jordan Willis. Brian Curran trying to roll one away and it came out at center. And here is Sean O'Brien to turn it away. Move it across the line. O'Brien for Maurice down the left wing. He's bumped by Kusev. And it's taken by Curran. Curran a headman pass for Zach Boyer. Rink wide now. Up through the neutral zone for Kevin Meehan. Hits the line, dropped it. Boyer speeding in. Boyer centered one. Cote was in there, but he couldn't find the handle. It came back to Cote. He's watched by O'Brien. They fight for it a little bit. And the K-Wings trying to get in there with a final minute of play in the second period. Nodded at one. Freer for Maurice across the blue line. Maurice dropped it for Mark Freer. Cuts in, looks for a pass. Couldn't find anybody. Stays with a puck, though. Freer for Mike Yo. Rolled it down. That's chipped away by Kevin Meehan. And he'll move it up ice. Meehan through the neutral zone with Zach Boyer. Cranked it into the arrow end. And there was Troy Gamble to make the save. And Mike Yo will turn it around with 33 seconds to go. Right back into the arrow zone it goes. And Carl Malamont will hustle back to play. Arrows trying to get it out of the zone with 23 seconds left. Cannot do it. It came right back down. And Gamble will leave it for Valamont. He'll shoot one. Who gave it away, though, to Colin Bauer. Here's Bauer, left side, centered one. A chance, Jensen shoots. It got into the pillows of Troy Gamble. And he will hold on. Oh, Carl Valamont, he had some time. And I don't know, when he looked up, fired it right to Colin Bauer. And Bauer nearly made him pay with nine seconds to go in the period. Sometimes in that situation, a defenseman will see someone breaking, and they'll zig instead of zag, and it'll be like a blatant giveaway. But... Gamble had to squeeze the pads in that situation. That's a tough situation for a goaltender because your stick's off the ice, the puck goes in between your pads, and you know there's a bit of cushion in there to hopefully stop the puck, but he wasn't too sure as he tried to squeeze them, and he does so. And so the score stays 1-1 with 9.3 seconds remaining in the second period. Face-off between Al Conroy and Robert Petrovichki. This is a key face-off with nine seconds in your own end. You need to win this thing, and the arrows fight for it right now still no one decided and finally the arrows come away with it and here's Kelly Erd with two seconds left and that's the period so the horn sounds ending 40 minutes of play from wing stadium the arrows and the Michigan K wings are tied at one and we will have more from wing stadium when we return this is Saturday night on ice at Wing Stadium. The game is tied at one. And kind of a, a difference of two periods, if you will. The first period was very methodical and, and very defensively played as the teams really had just 13 shots amongst the two of them. And, then, and no goals were scored. And then things kind of opened up a little bit in that second period. Yeah, it did. And I think, I think the guys kind of wanted to kind of be careful in that first period and they were careful no goal scored as we mentioned and then they came out in the second period and really tried to open things up and it, 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 it did well for both teams I think it did a little better for the K-Wings as they got the majority of the shots Troy Gamble had to be sharp and he was and uh, so we have a 1-1 game on a kind of a funny goal by Carl Valamont you know as you mentioned Troy Gamble played in this building but it was a while ago does it still do you think have a lingering effect in him that he always wants to play well against a team that used to be one of his oh definitely I mean uh, it's it's funny you 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 play for a team for a long time and then you you come back you always want to do because the fans they remember I, mean, I don't care what they always remember the guys that come through and and Gamble knows this building really well he knows the bounces in this building and and, and it's a good goaltenders building anyways as I mentioned earlier it's a kind of building that you want to play and there's not a lot of wide angles and you can uh, you can really concentrate on on the stuff in front of the net let's uh, update everybody on the central division standings and obviously everything's decided
decided except the bottom two people. The Atlanta Knights with 69 points, 12 back of the Houston Arrows who picked up the win last night, 25, 42, and 7. So the arrows are 12 points back. What that means is the magic number is at three. Everybody in the in the uh, Eastern Conference has clinched a playoff spot except the Atlanta Knights and the Houston Arrows. And uh, basically what that means is if Atlanta were to win tonight and the arrows were to lose, the magic number would be down to one. You don't want to see that. No. And that's what I said last night is the, the fact that this, uh, with so many games this weekend, the arrows playing tonight and tomorrow night, and of course Atlanta playing tonight and tomorrow night as well, everything could be decided by this weekend or it might not be, but uh, you know, you never know. It all depends on how Atlanta does against Cleveland, and Cleveland might be a little bit mad after losing last night to the arrows. And it was touched upon by Carl Valamon about how the team feels in the locker room. They still are playing to win this thing. Well, and that's good. That says a lot about the players. It says a lot about the character of the players. They're going to come out, and they're going to try and win every game. And Dave Tippett said it in the interview before the game. He said, you know what? There's really not that much pressure on the guys as much as there is on the other team to win, and uh, the arrows aren't playing spoiler yet. They're still trying to make it to the playoffs. On the other side of things, in the Northern Division, the Michigan K-Wings are just a point back of the Indianapolis Ice as those two fight out. Cincinnati's going to win this thing running away. Fort Wayne, I doubt they will catch either Michigan or Indianapolis, so those two teams are going at it. We will see Indianapolis on this road, tri uh, road trip. It's been a while that before we have seen Indianapolis, except when, of course, they were there for the back-to-back -back in the summer. But before then, it was a while before we had seen them. I think this is a very improved Indianapolis ice hockey club. Oh, yeah, and, and we, we said that last time we saw them at, at the summit, and now the fact is that uh, we saw a team that was just trying to get, the, try, just feeling their oats at the beginning of the year. But I tell you what, they've come together as a pretty good squad. All right, well, things coming together here. It is a 1-1 hockey game after two periods of play. And when we return... This is Saturday Night on Ice. Hockey game is tied at one. Second intermission from Wing Stadium in Kalamazoo. And let's take a look at uh, uh, what was a very good period. And the scoring summary goes like this as Carl Valamont started it off with a, a blue line bomb from center ice. The Arrows had a 1-0 lead at 4.42. Lamb and Conroy getting the assist. And then the K-Wings come back and score on the power play. Shane Peacock from the slot at 6.25. Jim Storm and Robert Petrovicki getting the assist. Tonight, we take time out for good health, and our topic is outpatient surgery. Let's take time out for good health. It's a 1-1 hockey game after 40 minutes of play from Wing Stadium in Kalamazoo, Michigan. Adam Gordon along with Mike Greenlight. What are your thoughts coming into the third period? Is it going to be physical or do things open up again? I think it's going to be tight. Uh, you saw the beginning of the game. The guys are a little cautious. I think you're going to see that cautiousness again coming in this third period. No one wants to give this game away. No, absolutely not. And I'll tell you what, not a lot of goals this one, but there was kind of an exciting one from Carl Valamont. Uh, it, was, it was a little tricky, and he gets a shot from just halfway in between the red line and the blue line. Al Conroy is jumping up right in front of him, so may, that might have uh, made Jordan Willis lose sight of that puck, but it's a knuckleball as it comes down, and Jordan Willis doesn't allow these kind of goals too often, but I tell you what, you remember him when you do is Valamont gets his fourth goal of the season, and it's from way outside the blue line, not one that Jordan Willis will soon forget. And then the K-Wings come back on the power play and tie things up. Well, this goal is a nice goal. It's by Peacock as he just blasts one against the grain on Gamble. Gamble going from his left to his right, and Peacock just goes the other way, and he puts it right inside the post. A very nice shot, and that tied the game up on the power play. And we'll take a look at the second period stats brought to you by Whataburger. Hey, what you waiting for? And two, two periods, the shot 29 to 15. K-Wings leading in that department. They're one of two on the power play. The Houston Arrows are 0 for 1 on the man advantage. The Arrows, 18 minutes of penalties, while the K-Wings have 16 minutes in penalties as well. And one battle I want to keep an eye on in that third period is the battle between Steve Jakes and Patrick Cote. Yeah, that's going to be a good one. We've seen them uh, do the little dance before, so you never know. If the game gets out of hand by either, either team, you might see them uh, go for another dance. Tied at one. After 40 minutes of play, when we return, third period action. We'll have that right after this. Don't miss
miss the wild, wild rate. Now playing at a Texas Jeep and Eagle dealer near you. Starring Grand Cherokee Laredo. Voted best full-size sport utility by the Texas Auto Writers Association. Directed by Chrysler Financial. An incredibly wild rate of just $2.98 a month. But if you want to get Grand Cherokee for $2.98 a month, you'd better get a move on. Because come March 31st, see your Texas Jeep and Eagle dealer today. Well, they're, they're uh, pre-cut. You know, I, I like that. Uh, very tidy, perfect edges. You know, all, all, that, all that tear along the dotted line, you know, they, they always... Right, right, tear. I, I'm, no, I'm not any kind of retentive. I, I just like things neat. Watch your mail for the bright yellow coupon-packed envelope. It's savings by mail from Swabiv's Coupon Savers. Listen, listen I, I, I have to go. I'm uh, alphabetizing the, the food in, in the freezer. A terrorist group takes an entire police precinct hostage. We can have a bloodbath on our hands. And only one cop can stop them. A cop who uses all five of his senses, like weapons. Now he's going to get your head blown off. Now, with every move, you'll feel the suspense building. And building. Right to the finish. What the hell was that? Hold on tight. Oh, my God. The Sentinel. Sunday night at 8 on UPN 20. Back at Wings Stadium. The K-Wings and the Arrows tied at 1. And we're ready to go for the third period. And I think it'll be a pretty good third period. This, this game has had its moments, especially at the start of the second. But, boy, when these two teams grind it to a halt... Kind of lulls everybody down. But it's kind of one of those, as Rob Dobson termed it, that's, that's what you want on a road game. You want to keep it simple. You don't want anything cute on the road. Well, Michigan has lost 17 in the shootout this year, and that doesn't tell the whole number of how many shootouts they've had. But I tell you what, they're the type of team that'll take you right down to the wire and then, uh, and then go into the shootout. So the Arrows at least have that advantage probably in the shootout. They lead the league in losses in the shootout. That's amazing that the Arrows have eight more wins than the K-Wings have in shootouts. That's an amazing statistic. Buck comes back to the line, and here's Hurlbut with a shot that came down to Jordan Willis. He'll scoop it up and hold on to start things off in the third period. Jordan Willis faced 15 shots through two periods and has stopped 14 of them. And the rookie draft pick of the Dallas Stars he played a few games up in Dallas this year. Was up with Dallas at least for a few games. Getting a, getting a taste of the NHL action and, and come back down and uh, get things worked out. Get the bugs worked out. After Dallas reassigned him here, he's done a terrific job. Puck comes back to the line for Gord Krupke. Right side, shot comes on. A glove save made by Willis. That's rolled away. It'll bounce along the boards. It came out in front. Goose have turned it. And Derek Smith will try to clear it. He's tied up by Lamb. Gusev, oh, turned it over to Kelly Hurd. Quick shot and a right pad save made by Willis. And he'll turn it in behind the net, and Gusev rolls it away. Gusev's pass came out at center. And the K-Wings shoot the puck into the arrow end. After it, it's Neil Brady. Chipped it back to the line, but Lamb knocked it away, and he'll move out at center and put it into the Michigan end. Colin Bauer rolled it away for Chris Jensen who was acquired in the trade that sent Daniel Marawa to the Minnesota Moose. Got the puck ahead. Arrows turn it around, but it's right back out at center, and Colin Bauer is there. Bauer left side. Give it to Jim Storm. Quick pass, Petrovitsky, and across the line. Petrovitsky cutting it. Quick shot. Snap wide. It was deflected by Carl Valamont. And the puck up over the glass and into the crowd with a little over a minute gone by in the third. We're tied at one. Vadim Slavchenko doing a good job tonight. And Trying to find some room out there and has found a bit of room. He did a good job on that la last shift in the second period there where they got a good chance of scoring. Gave it to Turgeon. He blasted one at the net but wasn't able to put it in. Since Igor Bashkatov has joined this team, he has two goals and two assists for four points. And he had the tally last night against the Jacks. Face off in the circle to the left side of Troy Gamble. Jakes rolled one along the boards and that'll go right back down the ice. Turgeon after it in there with Brad Perry and delayed offsides call or uh, icing call by uh, Derek Martin. He was kind of waiting. I thought Turgeon might have beaten Perry there, but there's no complaint. So Brad Perry will go on and, and the 
Houston Rockets are going to be back on UPN 20 on Tuesday night at 9 o'clock for the Golden State. That's the Rockets and the Golden State Warriors right here on UPN 20. And then opening telecast on UPN 20, the Houston Astros and the Cincinnati Reds from Riverfront Stadium in Cincinnati. And all the action on UPN 20. I can't believe baseball is already here. And I, I got to be honest, I was a little disheartened with baseball with all the troubles, but now I'm excited again. I've got a little bit of excitement in me for the baseball season. I think Terry Collins, he's going to have himself, he can get the pitching rotation settled down. I think Terry Collins is going to put together a pretty good run at things again. I think offensively they're set. I mean, Biggio and Bagwell, and they can get the pitching settled down. I, I like the Astros once again to, to contend. Face off out at center ice. All right, I'm back to the winter sport. Greeny's looking at me like, come on, I'm a hockey guy. <laughs> I don't mind watching a baseball game or two. <laughs> I love it. Uh, the only thing I miss is outdoor stadium, but I shouldn't say anything being from Seattle. <laughs> no such thing there either. But I love going to outdoor baseball games. Buck is into the arrow end. Maybe they could retract the roof of this building. Here is Igor Bashkatov. And that's turned away. It's like 45 degrees today in, in Kalamazoo, Michigan. Ball me. Buck goes into the arrow end. And in the fight for it was Igor Bashkatov. They'll roll on near side. It came out at center, and Slivchenko brings it up. Slivchenko right side in across the line. Slivchenko scraped along the boards and getting into it with Brad Berry a little bit. And Slivchenko yelling at Al Kimmel saying, hey, call a penalty. That's not going to work, uh, Vadim, because he hasn't called it all night. He's letting the boys play. Buck is picked up by Michigan and shot the length of the ice by Brad Berry, and this will be an icing call as Miles O'Connor goes back. Brad Berry was getting into it a moment ago with Slavchenko, and as Berry went to the bench, he's his third year as a Michigan K-Wing, and for his three previous years as a Michigan K-Wing, he's been an IHL All-Star each of those years. So it's 1-1, two and a half. Gone in the third period. And, uh, and as we as we kind of predicted, Adam, it's been the kind of pace that we thought we'd see, and that's the same pace as we saw in the first period. Pretty uh, <laughs> pretty uh, slow pace where the guys are doing a lot of clutching and grabbing and not a lot of shots on goal. Clock is in the Michigan end. Patrick Cote fighting for it. O'Brien came in there to have a look at things, and there's Smith. Dennis Smith cleared to the line. It's out at center ice. Kevin Meehan dumped the puck in. Out of the net, Troy Campbell. He'll leave it for Miles O'Connor. Steve Wooden push it up the boards, and then O'Connor was creamed in there by Patrick Cote, and O'Connor comes up a little shaken up on that. And now O'Brien comes over to talk to Cote, and everybody kind of discussing matters, but I think the cooler heads are going to prevail after O'Connor went into the boards. We're tied at one from Kalamazoo. We'll be right back. What do you get when you fly the low fare airline? Fun fares. Well, you've waited so long for a fare to get so nice and low. Really should fly now, you really should fly. Light up the night. Southwest Airlines' new fun fares are so low. Want to see that again? Now you can fly just Why for the fun of it. By the looks of it, it could be a whole new car company. It's one of the most successful car companies anywhere. It has the most innovative minivans in the world, the friendliest cars on the planet, and some of the most fun that ever prowled the streets. Plymouth. It's not just a new line of cars, but a whole new line of thinking. From Plymouth Place, our mobile information centers and showroom, to an internet showroom in your own home. Plymouth is one clever idea after another. After another, after another. Back at Wing Stadium, if you're enjoying the game on UPN 20 here, you'll see Miles O'Connor get hit hard in the lower left part of your screen as we cut away, and we'll bring it to you from a different angle as Miles O'Connor just gets hammered along the boards there, and he gets imprinted, and may have he definitely got shook up in there. He's made his way slowly back to the bench. I'm going to say watch Miles O'Connor for the rest of the game, and he's the kind of guy that'll come and give some payback, and Cote better watch himself. Base off of the circle to the left side of Troy Gamble. And the Arrows win the draw. Conroy popped one up ice, but it was knocked away by Derek Smith. And the Arrows are back. 
You've got Krepke near side, trying to move it out of the zone, battling with Chris Jensen, skate to skate along the boards. O'Brien chased it down in the corner, and he'll motor in behind the net. Reversed it to Krepke, and the arrow's trying to move it up ice. Krepke looking for Lamb, battling near side. The arrow's finally get it out at center. Brian Curran's got to hustle back as he'll go back to get it. Curran in his own end. Rolled it up for Smith. Chipped one out at center. Neil Brady gathers it in. Brady over to Smith, and it goes into arrow territory, and Gamble knocked it down. Pearl but is there. He'll reverse the puck to the near side, and Mark Lamb will bring it up ice. It is Lamb. A headband pass for Al Conroy. He'll dump it into the Michigan end. Kelly Hurd gathers it in, taken to the boards by Gusev, picked up by Michigan, and Brad Berry will redirect it to the line, and not out. Berry again, tries near side, fires it over to Gusev, and the K-Wings will bring it up ice. Peacock to the neutral zone. Had his feathers ruffled there and had it chipped away, and it goes back into the arrow end. Jakes turns it around, and the K-Wings try it again. Here's Jim Storm, past Petrovicki, trying to cut in. Looks for the shot, can't pull the trigger. Now lets it fly, and it hit a skate and went wide. Jim Storm has it right side, centered for Petrovicki. Oh, a terrific save by Troy Gamble. Holy smokes! It was Robert Petrovicki that changed direction on a shot, got a good one away, and Gamble makes the save with four and a half, gone in the third, tied at one. Petrovicki has 23 goals this year and almost his 24th as Gamble gets a piece of it. He just can't find the rebound. Finally, he realizes that it's underneath him and he'll sit on it, but a good job. Originally, it just shot through a crowd. The centering pass will come to Petrovicki and he'll make a good shot right inside the post, but Gamble, as I said, earlier has shown a lot of improvement in his lateral movement this second half of the year and he gets over there really well and thwarts that effort by the K-Wings and a face off to the right side of Troy Gamble one off the draw the arrows have it and they'll try to move it out of there it is Valamont chipped it out at center ice turned around by Michigan Kevin Meehan give it to Brad Berry left side He'll roll one ahead. Cote trying to advance it. It's knocked away. And Bashkatov scampers in across the line. He had that knocked away. Now the K-Wings move it up ice. In across Zach Boyer. Give it to Miam. Dropped it back for Boyer. Quick shot. Gamble stopped it. It was loose in front. And Gamble will dive on top of it and freeze it for a faceoff. Just about five minutes gone in the third. We are tied at one. Fans, in an effort to educate Houston on the fastest growing sport in America, the Houston Arrows are hosting two weeks of hockey camps this summer. Camps will run for one week each, July 15th through the 19th at the Willowbrook Aerodrome and the 22nd through the 26th at the Sugarland Aerodrome. Rob Dobson and Graham Townsend will be the instructors for both weeks, and there will be special guest appearances throughout the camp. For more information, call the Arrows at 621-2842. That number again is 621-2842. And I understand that they are filling up in a hurry, so get your kids signed up. Could you imagine two weeks with Rob Dobson? I, I got to do it for a whole I'm year. Gonna, I'm going to sign up. Oh, man. Well, at least everybody will understand what we have to go through 82 times a year. Buck is in the Michigan end. And finding for it, the K-Wings have got a quick shot right on. And there's Troy Gamble to make the save. And uh, let's see if uh, Mr. Dobson is lurking around. And Bob, are you down there? Yeah, sitting yeah. right here. Yeah. I haven't gone anywhere, Adam. You've just have neglected to speak to me. Uh, well, we just didn't know if you wanted to talk to us. What, this game is kind of grinding to a halt here. Is this what the Arrows want? Oh, I think so. You know, we've played a pretty good road game so, so far. And, you know, when you win a third period tied or better, uh, you have an opportunity to win the game. And one of the things we stressed in between periods is that we really have to, to take it shift by shift, not panic. Uh, stick to the game plan and things would work out. Uh, unfortunately, we haven't got a lot of quality opportunities to score this week. But the way Troy's playing, he'll hold us in there until we get a chance to score. That was my next question. How do you think your partner's played tonight? Well, I tell you what, I don't mind backing this guy up. I've said all along that he's probably one of the best in the league. So, well, we appreciate it. It's been that. a real treat to, uh, to sit here. When he's on his game, it's something to watch. All right, thank you very much. Here's Al Conroy. Back into the Michigan zone. It's picked up by Smith and shot out at center, and O'Brien hustles back to get it. O'Brien snaps a pass to the far side, and here is Al Conroy at center. He'll bring it across the line. Uh, O'Connor, or make it to Lamb with a shot, stopped by Jordan Willis. Conroy trying to work it down. It came back to the line. Krupke smacked one, but that's picked up by Peacock, and he'll move it up ice. Peacock shuffled it ahead for Petrovicki, knocked away by the arrows, and Conroy turning at center with six minutes gone in the third. 1-1 from Michigan. 
It is Petrovitsky, left side. Quick shot is blocked by Hurl, but who dove in front of that. Here's a cross ice pass, smacked in there. And a save, I think Gamble may have gotten a piece of that one. I'm all choked up over that one, and that one was cranked in there. And then the puck is rolled away, and it's frozen along the boards, and play whistle down with 13.44 to go in the third title one. This has definitely been the Ides of March for the Houston Arrows. January and February was terrific. Remember, what happened in the third month? I don't know, and, uh, and Dave Tippett was, was shaking his head, too, because it, it, was, it was almost an instantaneous change from, from a team that's playing the system and doing everything the way that he wanted them to do it to a, to a team that all of a sudden turned their game plan around for some reason, uh, and not, not by his doing, and, and for some reason found themselves uh, having trouble in the month of March. Yeah, and we touched upon it. I mean, if the Arrows go 500 instead of 2-9 and whatever, the Arrows are right back in the thick of the race because Atlanta is doing the famous come from ahead to lose. But uh, it has not worked out that way. But again, the Arrows' magic number is three, so there's still some life left in this team. It is Valamont in his own end. Steers one out at center, moves it right side and cranked it into the Michigan zone. After it, it's Freer. And back to play, Dennis Smith knocked it away. Moves it along the board. I've never seen a puck stay up on the dashers more than I do here at this building. Up goes into the Michigan end, and it's Travis Richards attacked by Freer. And the K-Wings go back. Colin Bauer fighting for the puck with Yo, who nearly centered one out in front. Yo got it back, trying to stuff one in there. Yo chipped one down for Maurice in a battle with Colin Bauer. Cycled it down low for Freer, playing peekaboo behind the net. Freer trying to center one. Jordan Willis got a piece of it. And the K-Wings turn it around. Out at center, Zach Boyer shoots it into the arrow end. Gamble knocks it down. O'Brien goes back, and icing will be the call, and we take time out. Twelve and a half to go in this one. We are tied at one. We'll be back after this. When you change everything and break the rules, you can expect a reaction. We sure got one. Four Dodge nameplates were just named Consumer's Digest Best Buys. So we're celebrating with savings on this Best Buy. Dodge Neon. With more standard horsepower than Cavalier, Escort, and Civic, Neon also has a lower starting price. Even before $1,000 cash back or 1.9% financing. See the friendly Dodge dealer near you. Monday on UPN. This is the Kess you know. This is the Kess you don't. Your mental abilities are rapidly maturing. Kess is possessed by a power she can't control. She wants to destroy the ship! It's a mind-blowing Star Trek Voyager. Then on Nowhere Man. Unity! Commitment! The conspiracy that's out to destroy Thomas Vale is breeding a new generation of killers. And he's their next target. Nowhere Man. Right after Star Trek Voyager. UPN Monday. Back in Kalamazoo, it's 1-1, and the spotlight, as this season slowly comes to an end, focuses to the man on the right, Pete Deneen. He will be a busy man this summer, and I, you know, I asked him earlier on, I said, what kind of summer do you have? Is it usually, uh, is it usually pretty relaxed, pretty busy? He said, oh, it's usually pretty involved, you know, pretty busy. Well, double that, because he's going to probably make a lot of changes this summer for the Houston Arrows. But one thing to say about Mr. Deneen, with all the trades that he made during that trading deadline, guys that you don't see or even know about, wait till you see who he's going to have a chance to pick from, because, you know, Las Vegas has a great list, regardless of what they provide. Their team is so strong, and he gets to pick some players from that list as the futures to Di Pietro and Laniel. And there's a puck that's cross ice, knocked away, and there are futures involved with the Arneal deal as well. Now there's a power play on. There was a penalty called as we went to the break on Slivchenko, so the King Wings are on the power play. It was away from the play. It was a, a roughing call to uh, Slivchenko, and to be honest, I never really saw it. In fact, the referee never had his hand up, but he called it uh, evidently, and obviously the King Wings on the power play. Petrovitsky shoots the puck into the arrow zone. Gamble knocked it down. Rolled it in deep. It went to the corner. Valamont trying to knock it away. Peacock in a battle. They scrape in there. Skate the skate along the boards. Jim Storm loosened it up along the walls. Storm tied up by Valamont. Knocked off the puck. It came back along the wall. Here's a chance for Storm getting set on the power play. Cuts it down. Shot stopped by Gamble. Puck came out in front. And Gusev is there. 
Worked it down into the corner and is picked up by Houston and shot right back to center ice. Adam, in a game like this, uh, you get down to that eight, seven minute mark and a game one, one that's been tight all game. It's like almost like sudden death overtime the rest of the way because you're not going to see a lot of scoring, I don't think. Yeah, but this is where you like to have the veterans that the Arrows have in the key situations. They don't panic. And you, know, you like their chances going down the stretch for a key play that could lead to a key goal. Arrows trying to kill off a power play right now. As this is just the third power play all night for Michigan. They were one of two on the man advantage coming into this one and about to go one and three if they don't hurry because we're down to 15 seconds left in the power play. Colin Bauer in his own end. Four checked by Lamb. Bauer turns in his own end, and there's five seconds left in the power play. Pocket through the center ice area. In across the line, and play halted down, and out of the box comes Slivchenko, and it goes back down the ice. It came out at center. Here come the Kaywig, Smith, left wing, cutting in on goal. He's watched by Krupke, taken to the boards. They fight for it some more, and Bashkatov was there, and here come the arrows out at center. Maurice over to Slivchenko. Comes right in on goal. Stuff shot. Poke check by Willis. A backhander by Hurlbutt hit the side of the net. And Kevin Meehan will shoot that the length of the ice. Ten minutes done in the third. Tied at one. Arrows have a puck, but a pass missing Slivchenko. It eludes everybody. And Dennis Smith goes back, and I don't know how that is not icing. I don't understand it. Oh, well. If Baskatoff would have touched it, it would have been like an eight-line pass. I don't think there's eight lines on the ice. I think I'm going to go to rules to get myself squared away on the rule. I really thought I had a good grass puddle. Here comes Baskatoff across the line. Dropped it Slovchenko. Give it to Kelly Hurd. Puck was centered, and that was knocked away. Next thing you're tell me is the arrows are going to be called for traveling. Here's a pass at center. Brady trying to elude a Jake's check. It's brought in Cote. Trying to get it right side for Mitchell. And it's into the arrow and out of the net gamble, and he'll give to Steve Jakes. Jakes turns the puck around to the near side. Lamb bumped it out at center. In there was Cote. It went into the Michigan end, and the K-Wings turn it around. A pass missing Petrovichki, and it goes down the ice. Again, no icing. It is Campbell out of the net. Rolled it over to Sean O'Brien. He'll shovel it to the line out at center. Lamb, the pass. Missing Conroy. Hurt had to go back and regroup. And now a nice pass for Lamb. In across the line, but he lost the puck. And the K-Wings turn it around. Petrovichki, bumped by Kelly Hurd. Brings it in across the line. Battle for it near side. Jim Storm in there to have a look at things, but it was whistled dead on the offsides, and we take time out. 8.43 to go. We're tied to one. Don't go away. We'll be right back. Oh, arrows! It's a big game for the Arrows. Good the fans are ready. Guys is ready and they're ready to drop the puck hey arrows fans celebrate the hottest game in town with the coldest beer on ice smooth refreshing butt ice the official beer of the ihl don't miss the wild, wild rate. Now playing at a Texas Jeep and Eagle dealer near you. Starring Grand Cherokee Laredo. Voted best full-size sport utility by the Texas Auto Writers Association. Directed by Chrysler Financial. An incredibly wild rate of just $2.98 a month. But if you want to get Grand Cherokee for $2.98 a month, you'd better get a move on. Because come March 31st, see your Texas Jeep and Eagle dealer today. Welcome back to Kalamazoo, Michigan. Home of the K-Wings. Home of a 1-1 game with 8.43 to go. Here is Mike Yo right side. Top of the circle. That shot hangs up. Nearly took the head off of Dennis Smith. And that puck sails out of play. Well, Mike Yo does the right thing. He takes the puck back. He doesn't have anything. So what does he do? He tries to get it on net. And I tell you what, judging by the Balamont goal, any goal can go in. And it just deflected up high into the stands. And you're right. Boy, if you're enjoying the game on UPN 20, someone just about got their lights knocked out by the puck. And it was Dennis Smith for the A-Wings. But close enough. Off is picked up by the K-Wings. Travis Richards in behind the net. Working back to the line. Miles O'Connor a shot whistled wide of the net. Picked up by Mike Maurice. Maurice trying to do his move around. He let it go down low, and that was picked up by the K-Wings. And shot to the line, not out. Arrows coming around. Fair trying to hold it in, but it was finally shot right back to center. 
center. Miles O'Connor goes back to play. It is O'Connor in behind the net. Slams a pass out at center. Maurice trying to bust one ahead for Yo. Now O'Brien joins the rush, but that is offsides. And play whistle down. And then Cote drilling shot. O'Brien. Yo drops the gloves, gets in there. Then Zach Boyer acts as third man in there. Now the question is, does Al Kimmel think he's peacemaker, or does he give him third man? Well, there's no such thing as peacemaker. You're either in or you're out. But I think what happened in that situation is Boyer got in there originally, but his arm got caught in between both players, so he really couldn't couldn't get out of there as uh, stuff starting to get rough down coming down to the final eight minutes of the game and Boyer like I said I think he tried to get in between both players and his arm got caught and he couldn't get free yeah I don't think he's gonna get third man he was peacemaker there but it's close we see the hit on O'Brien as he comes in and it he shoved down onto the ice by Smith and then it, I think Mike Yo goes after I'm not sure I think he went after Smith and O'Brien saying hey what the heck as uh, Cote stands on and finally gets in there but it's Smith that he gets in there with Cote gets in there too and then I think even <laughs> I think Boyer is getting it involved too. Cote is standing back and watching this one as uh, Yo jumps all over Smith. I think it was Cote that initiated the hit and then Yo trying to find the first man got in with Smith. Well, nevertheless, the Arrows will even it up with the, uh, the K-Wings, and so it'll be a four-on-four, four, and this ought to open things up, Adam, and that should be good for the Arrows as they need to get some offense going. They've been putting the pressure on the last couple minutes. Maybe they can turn this into a goal. Conroy Lamb with Hurlbutt and Krupke. And the puck turned in behind. the netminder will roll it away out at center and Freer has got it back. 6.20 to go. Tied at one. Carl Valamont, the pass, eludes Terjaw. Freer chased it down right side. Freer trying to cut behind the net. He's got Kusev Allen. Trying to center the puck. That was knocked away by Neil Brady and the K-Wing shoot it down the ice. Out of the net gamble, but he doesn't want to play it, so Valamont will. He heads behind the net. We're at six minutes to go. Puck is shot out at center. Freer pumping the Picked up by Jim Storm, and it's Ryan Curran in his own head. Curran skims a pass to the right side for Kusev, and he got it into the air on Neil Brady trying to get in there, and Jakes will take it away. Oh, it was stripped, though, by the K-Wing. Storm shoots, blocked, and Freer will turn it around, and he'll roll it down the ice. Is it icing? No, they'll wave it off. In that situation, Adam, a defense has got to go off the boards. You go up the middle, and sometimes he's going to get intercepted. It is... Puck away. Zatrinko moves in, shoots. Willis the save. Rebound in front. And Willis sweeps that out of harm's way. Now Dennis Smith's in the center of 5.14 to go. Smith dumped the puck in. And he comes out the hole. And play it over to Miles O'Connor. A pass ahead. And here comes Slipchenko trying to split the D. He's ready to go. And a shot and a save made by Jordan Willis. And play is with 
whistle down. Timeout on the ice. We'll do the same. Five minutes to go. Tied to one. This is Saturday Night on Ice. Whataburger wants to know, what's your number? I'm a four. I'm a two guy. Number one, or if I was real hungry, probably the number two. We have eight great Wada meals. Each one comes complete with fries and a drink. And now we're offering a special Wada meal featuring our crispy Wada Catch fish sandwich. I'm a three. I'm a four. And they're all at great low prices. I'm a number two. So when it comes to good food at a great price, Whataburger's got your number. Uh, numero uno. Number one. He's a five and I'm a ten. What you waiting for? Texas goes for trucks in a Texas size way where their heart is work or hard at play. And when Texas goes for trucks, it goes to the store selling Magnum Rams, Dakotas, and more. The Texas truck stop can do Dodge. Now get Texas size savings and values on a mid sized Dodge Dakota, like $1,000 cash back, or up to $3,500 total off on a Dakota Club Cab. The Texas truck stop the new Dodge. Back at Wing Stadium, a tie score, five minutes left. Troy Gamble making the save of the game to keep his team in it here. This could be the one that he'll remember as it's backdoored, and boy, he gets across and makes a tremendous toe save, and the rebounds eventually cleared out. A good job by Petroviki to get it across, and Gamble in fine fashion with the toe save. Face off in the circle to the right side of Jordan Willis. And it comes back to the line. Arrows have it. Sean O'Brien steers one down, and Willis covers up, and a whistle stops play with 4.54 to go. Let's go downstairs to Rob Dobson and Dauber. How about that save a moment ago by your partner, Troy Gamble? Well, unfortunately, he's been making so many of them. Everyone on the bench is standing up, but I can't <laughs> see. But, you know, like I said earlier, and when Troy's on his game, he, he reads the play very well, and he's been, uh, you know, tremendous the last few games just to get across and make that save. And that's what he's been doing. He did it last night against Cleveland to give us a chance to win, and last week against Indy, the same thing. So, you know, he's back to where I think he was at most of last season and it's uh, again it's a real treat to watch and we like it up here too Dauber here's Neil Brady out at center he'll shoot the puck into the arrow and then Gamble will come out and play it O'Brien rolls one near side for Al Conroy and it came out at center Ryan Curran rolls one ahead for Neil Brady and he'll shoot the puck in wide of the net Gamble will knock it down and Miles O'Connor is there look one to the near side Conroy out at center for Kelly Hurd Back for Conroy and across the line, and the puck goes into the zone. After it, Gusev trying to get it through Mark Lamb, and there is Chris Jensen to move it up and out of the zone. Jensen's pat to, to, to Petrovichki. That was easy to say, and Conroy gets it back. Al Conroy. Tell you what, I like the game that Al Kimmel's called tonight. He, he's been consistent. I've had no problem with his game tonight. Here is a pass that comes up to Mike Maurice and it's cleared out at center ice. Kelly Hurd, cross ice pass for Maurice, a little out of his reach, and it's back to center ice. Jim Storm had a poke check by Maurice, bring it across the blue line. It's Maurice, ooh, a Nola pass, dangerous at the blue line, and here come the K-Wings across the line, pass center, but look at Turgeon get back and take it away. Turgeon, that first forward that came back and took the puck away. Now Maurice in his own end, he'll move it up ice. Turgeon takes it away and rolls one ahead for Slavchenko. He tries to chase one down, but Travis Richards cleared it to center and back into the arrow end. Carl Valamont goes back. And he'll move it up for Slavchenko, heading up ice. He'll give it to Bashkatov and across the line. Bashkatov dropped it. Here's Yo. Shoots. Went far side. Just missed the net. The K Wings turn it around. 2.40 to go. Lock into the arrow end. And Valamont will go to play it. Slam it off the board and back out at center. Shots right now. As the puck hits O'Connor on the bench and play whistle down. And as a matter of fact, before we do anything, let's take a look at tonight's third period shots. And they're sponsored by High Low Auto Parts. You can get an auto part anywhere, but what you need is High Low. And 35 21 are the shots. So Troy Gamble, 34 saves. 
And Jordan Willis on the other side of things, 20 saves tonight. It's been real back and forth action in this last uh, three or four minutes, and this is what the this is what it'll come down to is what goaltender makes the last save, and it's going to be a game breaker, I'm sure. Conroy, Lamb, and Hurd with Sean O'Brien and Miles O'Connor. Luck of the Irish defensive tandem comes the back into the arrow end. Hurd it down low. Smith, the arrows are back. It is controlled by Miles O'Connor. Ranked it off the boards and hit one of his own teammates, Kelly Hurd. The arrows have to regroup and bring it up ice. Sean O'Brien, scampering right side. Pushed off by Smith. Got it into the K-Wing zone. Back to play, it's Colin Bauer. And he'll fire one for Chris Jensen as he orders out at center. Jensen through the neutral zone, spun away, and the arrows turn it around. It's Mark Lamb. 1.47 to go. Conroy crank one in there. Oh, Brad Berry takes it right in the gut. And there is uh, no padding there. You've got a little bit from your shoulder pads, but uh, it's very thin. And uh, I think that was actually maybe even a little lower than where the pads come. Well, I tell you what, if the chest protector comes down to just below your ribs, uh, the shoulder pads rather, and I tell you what, he takes it right in the midsection. He's going to have a raspberry there for a while. And uh, Conroy, this is a full wind-up slap shot, and it's from about, oh, 15 feet. And, Oh, he takes it right in the midsection. I tell you what, that would hurt wearing the goalie protect protection. Wow. Ouch. That's the same expression you give me when I give you one of my lines. <laughs> yeah, it hurts. It hurts in the, the same, same place. <laughs> <laughs> I saw that one coming. I had to get that one out of there. <laughs> All right, K-Wings have the puck. And it's a 1-1 game with a minute and a half to go in, the, in regulation. Travis Richards through the neutral zone. Fired it into Arrow territory. Gamble comes out this slow. Pearl butt kicked it away, and now the Earls bring it up ice. Mark Freer through the neutral zone. Freer bring it across the line with Terzhoff. Freer, quick shot, blocked by Dennis Smith. Freer again, waiting, cuts in behind the net, playing peekaboo, he's got a chance. Centered one, tipped away, here's Hurl, but the shot, and a great save made by Jordan Willis. He'll hold on. Unfortunately for Hurl, but the puck was bouncing all over the place. It gave Willis time to jump across the net. Hurl, but still gets some of it. But I tell you what, Willis gets the rest of it. As Freer does a smart play to get it on net, the rebound will come out, and Earl Butt will direct it towards the net, and <laughs> Willis getting over there, makes a save with a minute four left. A good job by Freer, though, ragging this puck around the net. He just waits and waits and waits. Finally, he'll get one in there, but it didn't really have a good chance as it went off someone, but Willis, who was already down, did his best to get over there and stop it. Mark Lamb, Al Conroy, Kelly Hurd, with Valamont and Jakes, and obviously at this point in the hockey game, Dave Tippett has shortened up the bench and going to his two best lines. Puck is picked up by Michigan, and it's brought out at center. Zach Boyer dumped it in. Gamble comes out to play it. Valamont in behind the net. He is drilled by Smith. In there's Mark Lamb, fighting for the loose puck, and it's scooped ahead, and the arrow's trying to bat it out of there. Al Conroy's in there, and He'll motor it out at center. A loose puck picked up by Den Derek Smith and shot into the arrow, arrow end. 35 seconds to go in regulation, tied at one. Puck goes down the ice. Icing is waved off. Colin Bauer goes back. Pass right side for Neil Brady. Puck is dumped in. Gamble slows behind the net. Sean O'Brien goes back to play it. And the arrows, oh, O'Brien had a little trouble, but was able to corral it. And move it out. Are we going to a shootout? It looks like it. Puck in the Michigan zone. Eight seconds left. O'Brien with a chance. O'Brien to Maurice. Working in there. Big collision. Puck loose. And that is going to be the hockey. It's O'Connor a shot. Went just wide. That would have counted had it gone in. And we'll take time out. 1-1 one, one, our score. And we'll bring you the shootout right after this. When you need an auto part, you don't need to search high and low. Just came in for some oil. We were packed that night. Really busy. I was in and out like that. I noticed it when he started to back out. I see this lady waving. Caught him just in time. She says my headlight's out. That's what I call service. 
He could get an auto part anywhere. What he needed was high low. $39 is not much money, but $39 down buys you a new Dodge in Tomball. $39 down gets you a Chrysler Plymouth a Jeep in Tomball with no payments for 90 days. $39 down is no problem on a Ford. Less overhead and 35 acres of vehicles to choose. Get into a Chevy or Geo at $39 down and we'll pay off your trade no matter what you owe. McCollum's Dodge City Dodge. Jimmy Copeland, Chrysler Plymouth, Jeep Eagle. Tomball Ford, Tomball. Parkway Chevrolet, Tomball. We're the Tomball Bunch. We're heading to a shootout tied at one, and quickly before we get a start, let's get a comment from Rob Dobson. Dauber, Troy Gamble, no, not to like him, but he's in a good position here. Yeah, it's a great game, man. A good road. We got a chance now to get two points, and, uh, you know, actually, that was a good play by Willis to be aggressive. And one thing about the shootout that I think Troy and I both all year have not been as, as aggressive as we should have been. And, uh, unfortunately, it hasn't been kind to us. But here's a chance for us to get two points on the road. That's a great effort. Troy Gamble will be aggressive here. We're in the shootout as Maurice is stopped by Willis, and it's Petrovitsky on Gamble. Waiting, shooting, Gamble saving with a blocker save. Last time the Arrows were in a shootout was back on March the 3rd in Orlando. They lost 2-1. And now it's Igor Bashkatov. He leads the league in shooting percentage, but he hasn't shot for the Arrows in a shootout yet. Well, this is his first shootout with the Arrows. As you point out, Bashkatov shoot, scores! Well, there's 100% right there, Adam. One for one. The Igor Bashkatov cocktail, shaken but not stirred. And the puck has moved to center, and now it comes down to Shane Peacock, who has the only tally tonight for the K-Wings. In across the line, Peacock, he waits, shoots. Oh, no, he didn't. Deked, but didn't shoot, lost the puck, yeah. and it remains 1-0, and then Gamble looks over at Shane Peacock. I think he tried to pull the puck around him, but it just rolled off the end of his stick, and Gamble, an easy save. So now it is Slivchenko, 41%, five goals, 12 opportunities. And here comes Slivchenko. He'll bring it across the line. In on Jordan Willis, he will make his move, shoot, he scores! Vadim Slivchenko. And the Arrows take a 2-1 lead, or 2-0 lead in the shootout, and it's the Michigan's third shooter coming aboard. I tell you what, even when I know Slivchenko's gonna make that move on a goaltender, even if the goaltender knows the move, it's tough to stop. Here comes Chris Jensen, third shooter, needs to score. Jensen cuts in, shoots, and Gamble, the right pad save, and Troy Gamble, I don't know. For someone who doesn't like shootouts, he's sure stoning them. I remember the one of the uh, shootouts he did so well in was in Chicago, and boy, was he uh, fantastic in that one. Lamb can win it here. If he makes it, it's over. And Mark Lamb will bring it across the line. Lamb in on Jordan Willis. He waits, shoots, he scores! And the Houston Arrows win the shootout by a score of three to nothing. And they win the hockey game by a score of two to one. The arrows are still alive, Adam. Still alive. We do not have an update out of Atlanta yet. We know they're playing Cleveland, and maybe we'll be able to get you an update before we sign off tonight. The final score from Wing Stadium in Kalamazoo, Michigan. It's the Houston Arrows 2, the Michigan K-Wings 1. We'll be back after this. UPN 20 Saturday Night on Ice has been sponsored by Southwest Airlines, by Columbia Healthcare Partners, by Chrysler Plymouth, by Dodge, by Jeep Eagle, and by Whataburger. The Houston Arrows win it tonight over the Michigan K-Wings. And let's take a quick look at tonight. Southwest Airlines just playing smart play of the game. Well, the man who held them in there all game long was Troy Gamble. And he does a great job in front of the net reading this play. A good pass by Petrovitsky across the crease. And he makes a great toe save. And then even gets a bit of the rebound as it goes wide. And does a great job the rest of the way, especially in that shootout. So Southwest Airlines flying the low fare airline is just playing smart. And the arrows were just playing smart tonight. 
Saints. They did play a smart game. It was really a defensive style of game. Once they saw in the second period that they didn't want to go with the open up style, they kept it really nice and tight the whole way through. And then when they had to in the shootout, put the goals in. All right, that's the good news. The Arrows win it tonight 2-1 in a shootout. So the magic number remains at three. However, the news is all not good because heading into the third period, the Atlanta Knights are leading the Cleveland Lumberjacks 3-2. If the Knights win, then the magic number goes to two. That's correct, but uh, let's not sell Cleveland yeah. short because Cleveland has, has, has a way. They have a lot of uh, wily veterans, and they have the ability to come back in a game, that's for sure. Yeah, so I'm sure the Arrows are going to be hinged to finding out on that one, but as we said again, heading into the third period, the Knights leading the Cleveland Lumberjacks by a score of 3-2. to two. The Arrows scoring on all shootout attempts except for the one by Mike Maurice, and Igor Bashkatov, maybe something like that gets him going, getting his confidence back, even if it is just a shootout goal. Right, obviously that doesn't count in the stats, but uh, it counts in the important column, and that's the win-loss column as he helps his team uh, get a win and tomorrow night's going to be a huge huge test for the arrows we uh, we know Fort Wayne uh, the arrows haven't beat them once yet this year and so this is going to be a big test they passed two big tests here winning against Cleveland and of course tonight against the K-Wings in the shootout and tomorrow's going to be the big test all right let's take a look at the final stats they're brought to you by a local Texas Jeep and Eagle dealer 35 26 the K-Wings out shoot the arrows Michigan finishes one of three on the power play and the Houston arrows finish 0 for 1 on the power play well, Greener, it was a good game, and uh, first of uh, five on the road, and thank you for your help tonight. All right, well, thank you. All right, you have a good night. The executive producer and director of Houston Arrows Hockey is Paul Bykowski. Tonight's game has been produced by Top Shelf Timmy Sinclair. Remote production facilities provided by NMT. The transmission services are provided by the Hughes Television Network. Saturday Night on Ice continues next Saturday, April 6th, when the Arrows take on the same Michigan K-Wings right here from Kalamazoo at 6.30. Up next on UPN 20, it's Amen. And for the listeners on KPRC, we return you to your regularly scheduled programming. Once again, the final score tonight from Kalamazoo, it's the Houston Arrows 1, the Michigan K-Wings 1 in a shootout, 2-1, the Arrows win it. For Mike Greeley and all the staff at UPN 20, this is Adam Gordon saying good night. copyrighted telecast has been presented by the Houston Arrows and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form without the express written consent of the Houston Arrows.